it's so bright and uh and it's hot we just all the everything just overheated but i think we're good i'm glad i got here early jerry how are the kids they're good they're good you know one thing that this whole deal has done they were cooped up inside for so long it's just been they really enjoy being on the field and being coached and everything you know and there's something to be said for all the uh, social distancing and that and the pods that we have to be in but i think like with my position group it's allowed you to get closer with the kids that you coach in your your position group you know because um oh, really? there's so many things that we have to do okay. together on the field and all right now so it, it, there's a lot of good things about it too so. oh that's great it's great to hear yeah i think I just about George, once a week i hear about you my dear i don't know i hope it's not bad um, it's never bad this so is many guys the first learn time, from you. I was just telling George, it's the first time since 1973 that on September 1st and September 2nd, you know, the first week in September, that I haven't been on a football field coaching and all, you know. Uh, really? Yeah, I don't know if we'll practice on Labor Day or not. I haven't. So again, that goes even further back as a player because uh, I, we always used to say Labor Day is for football teams and coaches to labor, you know. We were always it's weird, isn't it? You know who I'm thinking about? Did you just put us on mute, George? You, you guys, you know what? I'm, I'm about to go live, so I'm gonna, let's. No talking. Yeah, if we can go quiet for a second. That's cool. Oh, that's awesome.
Is everything cool, George? Okay. Behind the goal, we reset, and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda Behind brings goal, it right past two defenders. TJ Santeda Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, good for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score! And that is a base hit, the run will score, and freshman pull check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! Ah! All right, and welcome to the Morris Sussex Sports Talk Show, where we cover everything high school sports in Morris Sussex and parts of Warren County. We are live right now. We are live from Ivy Rehab in Newton. So if you're out and about, drop by, come by Newton, uh, say hello, visit Eric Armstrong inside. He's the man. And uh, if this is your, if, thank you everybody for tuning in. Just so you know, Morris Sussex Sports. We're a 14 year old media company that provides coverage of high school sports in Morris, Sussex, and parts of Warren County. We basically cover the NJAC conference. Everything NJAC is what we do, and we do all kinds of stuff. Articles, special interest stories, video highlights, live score updates, play-by-play -play broadcasts, and of course, live talk shows like this where we interview the players, coaches, and teams. And I'd like to introduce you to you, let you know who are joined by our panel, which includes Coach Jerry Gallagher from Del Barton, special teams coach, and of course, Gary yeah. Muhlhoff. Jerry, Karen, how are you doing today? Hey, George. Hi, Karen. Great to be here. Great to be here. Yep. So, Jerry, you were just chiming in and you were saying that this is the first time you haven't been actually coaching live. Did you say this is 1973? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is such an unprecedented time. And, you know, no one saw this coming. You you guys have been practicing. Del Barton has been practicing uh, all summer long. And now just since, I guess, Friday was – you, you know, you start this two week uh, break, right? Yep. Uh, yep. You know, it, it's been a good summer in terms of once we were able to get on the field and get doing some things with our guys and all. So we've had a, a, a good, uh, good three, four weeks on the field. And now, you know, we make the most and adjust to this situation as best as we can. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, uh, you know, guys, look at Jerry. They're working hard. I, you know, I was, George and I were talking pre-show about it. I think the, the guys, not just our team, but all teams were so cooped up inside and not able to compete or, or play their sports and all for such a long time. I think once they got back on the field, it's been really special. And uh, guys, I think, appreciate being on athletic fields and being coached more than they ever have before. So it, it, it's been good. 
Yeah, the yeah. camaraderie, That's... the st phys staying physically fit, the uh, the mental boost. It's good. Mm -hmm. Has has there been you know years like when you're kind of uh, three three four weeks into the summer workouts that the that the kids are uh, you know they're kind of getting sick of it in prior years where now they're like hey we're just glad to be here every every minute of it is that the vibe Jerry I don't know if being sick of it so much as being uh, you know they've adapted to the routine so much uh, more in the past and all you know so and they also had more options and more different things to do because they could be outside and all to where it's now it's it's really a specialized time of the day when they can get on the field and get going yeah well that's uh that's cool you know it's that was that's the vibe we've been hearing from all the all the teams and players um look we got a great show we got coach hack we got coach Japija uh from chatham uh, coach hack from morris Morris Catholic, but before you get cooking, um, I got to let you know, uh, we have Eric Armstrong from Ivy Rehab here, and, um, you know, Eric's uh, you, Eric? great supporter of high school, great, great. can you hear her? Okay, <laughs> okay, cool, so, um, Eric, I'm going to, uh, you know, I before we get cooking with Coach Ack, I just wanted to thank Eric for hosting us, of course, and always being a big supporter of Morris Sussex Sports and high school sports. Um, so listen, Eric, we were talking a little bit prior before, um, you know, right now there's, uh, you know, there's no high school sports and you were saying, hey, we anticipate probably getting a little bit busy here in about two weeks when the kids start practicing. So uh, can you talk a little, a little bit about, uh, you know, what are the kind of common injuries that, uh, that the kids are going, you know, kind of get into and maybe some of the things that they can do to help themselves? You know, I, I think the the time that we had before this, where we were allowed to do some of the conditioning and all that before this kind of shutdown. The little light, you guys, we can't hear you so good. Can you hear us? Um, Let me hear you a little louder, guys. They can, they, they can hear you. you okay. Can hear them through the, gotcha. You can hear yourself. They can hear you. Okay. Um, so now I was just going to say that I think, um, you know, the period we had you know, right before the shutdown period that we're able to do some conditioning, um, you know, it's going to be a big help with trying to minimize some of those soft tissue injuries that may happen when uh, kids kind of get back into pads and get moving. Um, you know, hopefully that will, you know, minimize some of that. But, uh, you know, ultimately, once we start getting back into contact, it's been a little while since kids have been able to do that, you know, we're, we're probably going to see some injuries, hopefully, you know, won't be as many as, as, uh, you know, that have happened potentially in prior years, but, um, you know, biggest thing is making sure they're warmed up, you know, getting, getting the muscles warm, getting loose before they start, uh, hitting each other with the pads. So, and then at least we got a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe two week period before we get into game game situations, but I'm sure these, uh, coaches you guys are having on are going to have them ready. So making sure, uh, it'll be a quick two weeks before they get into uh, game speed. So if people do get dinged up to Eric, you know, maybe they don't like tear their ACL, but maybe they're just not feeling right. I mean, they can, you know, you'll see them too. Oh yeah. Help them, uh, you know, they have a little twinge or something. Yeah. Maybe just not feeling right. Absolutely. Yeah. George's question was, uh, you know, maybe it's not something serious. The kids are just banged up. Uh, you know, if we would see them and, and absolutely that's where, you know, they're utilizing obviously the high school setting here with some of the coaches you guys have the athletic trainers in the schools, um, you know, getting them, getting some soft tissue work. And then obviously same thing here, you know, where we see some of those kids have, you know, muscle strains and, you know, you know, uh, rolled in ankles, things like that. So we certainly will treat those here as well and get them, get them back as uh, quickly and safely as possible. Yeah. That's awesome. So, uh, so, so, Hey man, we appreciate you coming on. I know you got a call coming yeah, on. Yeah. So, uh, Hey George, yeah, Hey George, appreciate every, you know, all the support and as well as hosting us today, if people are out, out and about in Newton, come on down, say hello. Absolutely. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yep. So, all right, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll have you on in a, we'll have you on in a, you know, maybe during the, between the, the three o'clock hour. Okay. Yeah, I'll try and swing back. All right, cool. All right. Uh, Jerry has a question, George. All right. I'll get him later. I okay, want to know if you guys are Yankee fans because I want to talk to a rehab guy about Yankee injuries and training people to run to first base without <laughs> getting hurt. All right, we'll save that for the, uh, at that three, the three o'clock hour. So Great. listen. We gotta, we're going to kind of get into things, Jerry. we got your alma mater, uh, uh, coach of your alma mater, coming on. So we're going to have some fun here. So we'll be right back right awesome. after this message, and we'll bring on uh, our friend John Hack. So we'll be right back. Oh, he's great, too. Greasy made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. 
I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. All right, welcome back. And we're here live with uh, Coach John Hack, uh, General Manager, Director, is. Athletic Director, running everything over there at Morris Catholic. Uh, Coach Hack, thanks so much for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, George. Great to see you, Karen. Coach Gallagher, hello. How are we doing? Hey, John. Good to see you. Coach, good I agree you. with you, man. Uh, I'd love to know what's going on with the Yankees and the injuries. So uh, I, I, have, I share the same sentiment. I, I just like you have the most high payroll budget in the history of sports and you don't have a trainer that can condition your guys to run the first base. Two I years in a row. Understand. Two years in a row. No. Uh, yeah. I don't know what's up with the Yankees. You know, uh, uh, they're so talented. If they were healthy, they would just be world beaters. They just can't seem to get it together health wise. Uh, I'd be curious to hear what like some of those athletic trainers on your staff have to say about that, but we'll ask Eric at the, at the, yeah. the uh, three o'clock hour. Um, so Ke coach Hackman, we were out there last week and um, you know, seeing you guys, I mean, you know, it's funny. Um, we were talking a little bit, you got some, some new guys coming up. You got uh, yeah. big uh, Jake. Um, uh, oh, his name's escaping me. Oh, Lacasco. I love that yeah. kid, Jake, the tank. And, uh, but you had some guys kind of transferring in. I mean, it's so, you know, we're saying like, Hey, winning breeds success. And, you know, uh, especially, you know, M Morris Catholic, you guys, I, I, you know, I've talked about Morris Catholic a, a lot through the years, as far as being a private and just being so primed located, you know, right off of route 80 yeah. right there. Um, seems like the winning and being off 80 and, you know, being a, you know, great schools really, all coming together there no well listen it's a tremendous place and it's got tremendous lineage you know as coach Gallagher can attest to you know uh it, it's not you know just these guys here today you know uh we've had a great tradition guys from way back you know uh to when coach played and to when coach coached here you know and uh there was a lot of great football here before us and uh we're just kind of we always talk about legacy we always talk about tradition we always talk about trying to build uh, build culture here. And we feel that, you know, uh, we're doing that hopefully in a way that are making our alumni proud and uh, hopefully in a way that our young men are uh, learning how to live life and, and become uh, great men and great football players at the same time. You know, obviously that manifested a little bit last year in terms of uh, success on the field. You know, we always say you can be successful on and off the field uh, by doing, you can do things the right way and be successful on the field. The two are not mutually exclusive. And, uh, you know, uh, I think we, we did have some success last year record wise, but I mean, I mean those were great kids, you know, uh, first and foremost. And uh, it's not just because of those kids. It's because of the guys that came before for them and the culture that's been building and building and, and they really bought in. And, and these guys this year are, are, you know, I think they're a special group, you know, like coach was talking about his guys, they work hard. And, uh, you know, they, they have a big chip on their shoulder. They have, you know, a, a big hunger to go out there and show everyone that, you know, uh, last year's group was great, but hey, this is a new season and, and we want to go out and, and make a name for ourselves. I, we always talk about each year is its own year, its own identity. And uh, the 2020 group, you know, uh, is out there to make sure that its own identity, uh, you know, grows and grows properly. So it's an exciting time. Like you said, we have some new kids, but you know, we have a lot of returning players uh, who work so hard. We're young. Okay. A little bit inexperienced, but uh, I'll tell you what, we are the deepest we've been since I've been here. And uh, you know, we have 46 kids on the team. I know that's not a huge number, but it's for us, it's a pretty good number. And the amount of football players and, and varsity football players that we have is more than we've had. So it's an exciting time, George, and I appreciate your coverage. I appreciate you coming down to practice and, and what you do for our game in the area, and it's pretty special. Yeah, well, uh, we, we love it. You know, I just love love it. And, uh, you know, John, I was surprised last year when you guys got to the playoffs, all of a sudden this big – all the headlines kind of coming out saying, hey, Morris Catholic hasn't won since, like, 1985, 1986, won a playoff game. Right. And uh, I, was, uh, I was actually a little shocked – and then uh, when you well, did, they've had good teams too. You know what I mean? They've yeah. had really good teams. But remember too, the playoffs were different back then as well. Um, only True. four teams got in. There was only two rounds, but still, I mean, it was still a great accomplishment for the boys. Um, you know, again, you can't take anything away from what they did. It was a great, 
uh, deal. It meant a lot to us. It meant a lot to the program. Uh, but again, you know, uh, it, there was that playoff drive. But again, like I said, I think the history of Morris Catholic football is something that we're proud of. Uh, but again, we want to make this team great. Uh, we want them. We always talk about your memories that you have from football, your relationships that you grow. And we talked about it just the other day on our Zoom call. Hey, it's the, the, the teams that, you know, that you connect with the most, generally the teams that have the most success. And they have the most success because they bought into the culture, because they work hard, because they love each other, because they support each other, because they care for each other. Okay. And all those things that football breeds, um, you know, so those are the teams that, you know, are generally the most successful. And that's what we're trying to continue to do with this 2020 group. Mm. And, uh, you know, so, and Jerry, last year, you know, you're an alumni, you coach there too. Uh, you know, you bleed uh, blue and gold, I'd imagine, you know, at the, at the root of things, right, Jerry? Uh, what was, were you, you must've been pretty proud when, uh, you know, uh, Morris Catholic kind of got that first playoff win in, in so many years, would you say? The first thing I do every week is check and see how Morris Catholic did. Now it's a, in some ways I'm relieved this year because they don't play boot because you know, when it's Booten and Morris Catholic, my, my heart is torn, but blood is thicker than water, you know, so, but um, always special. I, I did this, especially though, too, you know, my background picture. I was looking everything. at that coach. I was coach, looking that at that background picture is 1968. Morris Catholic versus Mountain Leaks um, picture there and all. You know, so it's, I, I, J J they had a golf outing at Morris Catholic uh, this past Monday and all, and John and I ended up texting on Monday night, and I think he got a feel for the way I care about that place. And uh, when you introduced him, you said he's athletic director and this and that. That comes with the territory. <laughs> I went from uh, – the football coach to uh, being uh, the athletic director to being the vice principal in charge of discipline and everything else. And it, but, but it's what I think makes it really special being there because you, when, when you're at MC, you're not just the football coach. You're involved with the whole family atmosphere of the place and all. And it's, a, it's really a special place to me. So yeah and whole family and I, you know like last year too uh john i mean you guys you sent six or seven or so guys yeah, yeah. to play at the next yeah. level um you yeah. know as as a coach what does that mean to you uh and what does that say about your program when it's you're important you know it's important because again we talk about this all the time with our players and our coaches like so why do you coach football why do you play football it's not just for wins and losses yeah we're all competitive and we want to win but you coach for these boys you know you coach to give them a, a special future you, you you coach to give them like i said special memories uh you know and experiences and relationships and the fact that seven of the third and that was a special group boy i mean i just texted all of them actually before i came on and and uh told them to tune in you know but um Mm. you know, they were a great group and all 13 of them contributed last year. Seven of them were going to play college football. Um, really a tremendous group. And uh, again, kids that uh, from all different backgrounds, you know, kids uh, who really came together as a group and, and led our team, you know, to a division championship, which we were very proud of um, and, and seven wins. And, and uh, again, special group. I uh, love those guys, you know, uh, I always tell them they'll always be my guys. A lot of them want to come back to games and stuff like that. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get fans to our games this year. And, uh, and if not, they can watch it on more Sussex sports. So, uh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We got to definitely going to be doing a couple of those games. Um, and John, so when you, you know, you took over five or six years ago, right. And um, you know, do you have a vision coming into uh, as, as a new coach? I mean, you probably don't expect to kind of come out winning state championships the first year. It's like a plan, right. Uh, you got to kind of build yeah. and uh, so grow. When I got from there. When I got there, a gentleman named Rob Loya, who I'm very fond of, was was our principal. And, uh, you know, he said to me, uh, he didn't expect us to win for about five years. And uh, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I said, OK, you know, um, I'll see what we can do. And uh, but again, it, the, the roadmap wasn't about winning. It was about culture, about setting the culture the right way. Uh, we were fortunate that first year to get five wins. Uh, that group was a special group. I had a great seniors uh, that had played for Coach Lasardi and Coach Gebert. And uh, I really, again, I just met, I just texted those guys as well. And, uh, you know, 
a bunch of those guys have come and spoke to my team this off season, whether on Zoom. Last Friday, Paul Honorati uh, Jr. came and spoke to my team. Uh, I mean, again, it's more special players and special relationships. But the blueprint for me is always the same. It's always culture, you know. And then for me, I try to get better as a person and as a coach and, and make the program better how I can. You know, one of my coaches here, Mike Arakelian, uh, he was an assistant when I got here. He was an assistant under Coach Lasardi and Coach Gebert. And, uh, you know, here I am, the head coach coming in, and I learned so much from Mike, you know, and I learned – so much about preparation and, and organization. And, and I feel like Mike's made me such a better coach uh, since I've been here. So, you know, you hope, my point is you hope as a coach that you can, you can improve so your team can improve. Um, but more than anything, the roadmap starts with culture. And like I said, in the beginning, if you feel like you can do things, if you do things the right way, uh, you know, that'll manifest itself on the field. You know, we do a, a theme and a Bible passage every year. You know, one of the first ones we did was Galatians 6, 9 for the Bible passage. And it's don't get tired of doing the right thing because at some point you will reap a harvest. You know, so I, I think we kind of try to do that here. You know, uh, keep doing the right thing over and over again. And eventually, you know, it'll pay off one way or the other. You know, and uh, again, I think that's, you know, I'm not sure how I'm answering your question very well, George. But again, it always starts with culture. Um, and then, listen, the football stuff. You know, um, I have a great staff. We have great kids. You know, we brought on Mike Beach this year, who's just a tremendous uh, asset to us uh, on the oh. side of the ball. You know, a great person. Mike actually was the head coach here at Morris Catholic uh, back in the day. Um, in yeah. The late 90s, mid 90s, to late 90s. Just a great coach, great person. Uh, tremendous. And a long time Del Barton guy, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, and then uh, one of my guys is on the door right now. Um, so <laughs> you guys, uh, I'm going to have to go. I'm okay. so sorry. I'm so distracted. I've got a buddy whose uh, dad is in the hospital, really sick. Okay. She's, right. she's uh, going back and forth with me. I just want to tell you, it would, you know, it'd be great if everybody wanted to say a little prayer for my Thank friend, you. Joya, her, uh, her dad, her, she is a dear, dear friend of our family. And, uh, you know, I want to be there. So I'm, I'm going back and forth. I'm going to, I'm going to stop though. I love seeing you both and George, I hope your, sh the show goes well. Yep. I'm so sorry. I can't stay on you guys, but yeah. enjoy, sorry enjoy. Hang in there. We'll okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. You got love prayers, what you just okay. said. Yep. Love what you just said about doing the right thing. That's a, that's a great message. Thank you. Thank All you right, too. Karen. Yep. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, we have a close friend whose fa father is, uh, been ailing so um um but uh, so big prayers over to uh arnold shaw over there big randolph fan arnold he's in the hospital uh <laughs> his sons were actually part of that, that big streak. yeah his sons were actually part of that, that streak back in the day uh back in the 80s <laughs> uh, so uh so john you know that's funny you know as far as culture and it's you know you go over to if you go to morris catholic you know you feel that that culture that you got cooking over there. Um, even when you talk to your players, you know, you can always say, say a lot about a team, I think from the players. And there's a lot of times where those players, you know, I'm, I'm not part of the program. You know, I'm just some guy who kind of shows up, you know, a couple times during the year, but you know, the way players are, the way they talk about their teammates and their pro and, and the program and their coach, you know, I think that always says a lot about a, a program and your players are always like that. They're always so respectful, even on social media, you know, the way they communicate, just, just very top class. So I, I, you know, it seems like whatever that, that culture you wanted, John, it seems like it's happening. Even like, you know, look you're in your office, you know, with all the pictures, you know, I was looking at those pictures the other day. I'm like, man, it seems like you've been here for 25 years, you know, like these memories, you know, I was looking at the players and like, I remember that guy. Yeah. And, but you know, it's amazing. It's only been, you know, five, six years so far. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, again, they're special kids. And, and Jerry touched on it before. This is really a special place. And uh, it's got, I, I'm a small part of it, George. You know what I mean? It's, I'm just blessed to be there and, and, and to try to use football as a platform to help these kids in life and to do, uh, you know, to do my best for them. Um, but, you know, we talk, you know, and Paul, like I said, one of my alums, Paul Honorati, was here last week speaking to, speaking to the boys and um, in our first meeting in 2015, we were in this office, the whole entire team, that's how small our team was. And uh, 
we put what we wanted to be our core values on the board. So we picked out like 12 to 15 words, things that would be important to us, you know, uh, through our pro, you know, through the foreseeable future for our program. And they came up with faith, toughness, hard work, and discipline. So, you know, if you look on our jerseys, it says FTHD, everything I tweet, FTHD. So, the, I mean, that's kind of who we are. One of the sayings we always say, be who we say we are, you know, live faith, live toughness, live hard work, live discipline, you know, live our Bible verse. This year, our Bible verse is Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous. It's such a great verse for this time that we're going through. Be strong and courageous. You know, so we talked about courage the other day and what does it mean? How do you do that? And, you know, so it's, uh, I think, listen, I think they buy in, um, you know, it's my job to make sure that happens. But again, they're special kids and they deserve the credit and I have a great staff and they deserve the credit. And uh, again, it's, it's a great place to be. Um, you know, I think the, uh, the guys that came before us set the bar high. Uh, the guys that I've coached here really have set the ground, ground floors up now. You know, when, when we first got here, you know, when we were talking to some of these guys that wanted to come to school here, we talked, listen, you know, the, the, the groundwork is set. Now, now it's like, okay, the, you know, the first several floors are set, you know, let's, let's, let's get to the pinnacle. Let's get to the, to the, you know, the penthouse. <laughs> When you are, I uh, have a team. This is maybe for both you guys, Jerry. I mean, you've been, uh, you've been around a lot of different programs. You always want to have a, a, a great c culture. I'd imagine that's something you want to strive for every year. But are there some years where it's just like it's just not happening? Just the the vibe isn't there for whatever reason. Is that does that happen? Absolutely, can happen. And and you know. Um, I think it's one of the things that makes MC special in, is that you can develop that the family as, atmosphere. And, and I think John is doing a great job right now, bringing back that tradition of excellence that way. One thing I, I want to say too, is that, you know, the old, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. He's talking about Paul Honorati Jr. Paul Honorati Sr. was a captain when I was at MC and played for us, he was an all state nose guard. And it does not surprise me one little bit, the attitude and the, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, what his son brings to the table because his father was the same way. And it's part of the values that I think Morris Catholic helps institute with, with kids and with young people and all. So and mm. the other thing too, I'd be, I wouldn't be fair if I didn't mention the influence of Mike Beach on me as a coach. When I went to Del Barton, I worked under Mike as, you know, he was our defensive coordinator. And when I was the head coach at Mopville, we played against Mike when he was the head coach at, uh, at Mars Catholic. And also he, he's just, what, just a great addition for John uh, to have on his staff. But, uh, mm. I'm, I'm really blessed with my staff. You know, uh, Kyle Cluffy is my offensive coordinator this year, and he's been with me for four years. And uh, um, he, he's he's been my special teams coordinator, my defensive coordinator, and now my offensive coordinator. Uh, and my gosh, what a great off season we've had offensively! Um, what a great summer we've had! I mean, it's exciting. It really is. And uh, you know, you know, we we, uh, we were really worried. You know, we graduated five guys who went on to play college football that caught the ball for us last year. And, uh, you know, how are we going to fill those shoes? Well, we've had some young, unbelievable young guys step up. We were blessed to have a few transfers. We have a great transfer quarterback coming, um, you know, but it's about all those guys coming together to do the right thing. We had a great freshman class come in. I mean, such a talented group, but such fine young men as well. So again, once you, I think you get the culture kind of the way you want it, it's easy to continue it, but you have to always improve it, right? And always be on top of it to make it better because kids kids adjust, you adjust, you know, uh, you don't want it to get stale. Uh, you, you have to continue to, to make it better. And I think, to be honest with you, I think, you know, um, myself personally, you know, it starts – you know, I have to make sure I'm getting better. Like, like we talked about before, you know, and I, and I have to make sure that I'm not uh, falling into complacency and things of that nature. And I, I think to be honest, this, this pandemic, um, you know, it, it's kind of how you, you handle things, right. You know, how, how you look at things, you know, it was a terrible tragic time for us in many ways, but 
for me, in, in some crazy ways, it was a blessing at times in terms of trying to get back to some good habits, you know, um, you know, prayer habits, eating habits, working out habits, being with my family, you know, uh, getting up really early. So getting my work done so I could be with my family. Um, it was a, it was a blessing to be, you know, uh, you know, with them and, and to get back into these good habits. And I believe as a, as a football program, we use the time, um, to also, you know, better ourselves as men. And then of course, as a football program and, uh, you know, we had over 50 virtual sessions with each other and, uh, the dedication from my staff and these boys were, were, was tremendous. Uh, the work that we asked them to do, they did, you know, we did stupid stuff like, uh, you know, crusader jeopardy and things like that, you know, but, <laughs> but it was fun, you know, and, and, and then you talk about social issues, all the stuff that's going on in the world and, 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 and you try to help them in those regards. And, and, and then you work out, you, you talk about football, you talk about steam, all that kind of stuff. And then once the summer hit, you know, uh, it's funny because, we were talking the other day, culturally, have we done enough? Cause it's always on my mind. And we did a lot with it virtually, but once the summer came and I'm sure Jerry, you can coach, you can attest to this too. Every minute is jam packed because you're limited to 90 minutes yeah. or you're limited to. So like every second, I mean, every second's always accounted for, but you know, it was, you know, I felt like, some of the culture stuff that we normally did. Plus we weren't inside, right? Everything was outside. So you, you kind of, you know, I was, I was worried that it was going by the wayside a little bit, but no, we were done a really good job and the kids have done a great job of working hard and sticking to our core values. And, and this last Friday uh, we had kind of a, a culture day where we, you know, we, we did some different things with them. And, and, and like I said, had speakers come in and, you know, did a Bible study, did uh, some different stuff on, um, you know, E plus R equals O, which is, a, I'm sure a lot of football coaches know, you know, Urban Meyer was big with that, you know, an event plus your response to the event equals the outcome. We talk about that with our boys all the time in terms of mental toughness. So we showed them Malcolm Butler in the Super Bowl getting beat by Jermaine Curse on that crazy catch that he had in the Super Bowl. Two plays later, Malcolm Butler makes an interception to win the game, you know. So how you respond to things is uh, is really that's all about life right how you respond to pressure and things of that nature so so um i know i'm going off a tangent here George. So. <laughs> well hey so you know to, you, you bring up a good point you know talk about uh us from a football coach perspective of a year where a lot of the things you, that are probably going on that were thrown at you had nothing to do with football i mean you know set aside the pandemic that shut down schools and you're dealing with with kids maybe probably worrying about their mental and and just well-being in general. Um, then, then, like you mentioned, there's a lot of things outside yeah. um, from a social uh, justice uh, thing, yeah. the, the political climate, the the Black Lives Matter, like all yeah. these protests, all this stuff cooking around the world. Yeah. You know, you have these young men. I mean, what do you do as a football coach in this time? You, and you can't even physically be on a field yeah. with your team. So, so we talk to them about it, you know. Um, you know, and, and you take all those things into account. And sometimes you wish you'd even done more, you know, and we even talked about that last week, you know, with all the social issues still coming up now, you know, and, uh, you know, I have a son who's biracial, you know, Johnny, yep. Johnny, you know, and uh, so it's something near and dear to my heart and, uh, and my players, you know, I mean, we talk about that kind of stuff and we address it straight on and, you know, we, we, we hope that it helps, you know, but again, it's it's uh it comes down to something some guy named jesus said two thousand years ago treat others the way you want to be treated you know mm -hmm. and uh i think that if we all lived our lives that way it'd be a pretty much a much better place to be mm -hmm. yeah how about you jerry i mean you're you're you know, a, you know with a program too dealing with the same stuff it's, we're, the thing is we talk about as football coaches that football is a game of adjustments and if football coaches have ever had to adjust it's been this whole situation and all and john i don't know what you feel about it but i think this the whole deal with where you know phase one we had to be in 10 person pods and all yeah i think that helped bring our teams closer together because they got closer together with the people in their groups and in those pods which in my opinion has carried over to um, you know, the team atmosphere that we have and all. So 
we have to we have to make the most of the situation that we're in and i think that's what we're trying to do right now you know there's nobody feeling sorry for any football team in america right now that's right and uh, you know so don't feel sorry for ourselves let's get out and let's make the most of what we can do and let's try to get better every day and go from there it's going to be adjustments all year long this year be, you know, who knows what kid isn't going to suddenly show up with COVID-19 uh, symptoms and all. And next man up, I think that if there's ever going to be a year where a next man up philosophy has to come into play, it's going to be this year and all, you know. So, and, and we as coaches too, it can't be the old deal. Well, well, he wasn't at practice yesterday. The heck with him. You can't do that. Because the, the situation we're in right now, we have to be understanding of, of that to a degree. You know? So anyway. Yeah. You know, what's funny. Um, the NGSIA, you know, of course, I am so pro sports and I can't even help it. You know, not that I can't be empathetic of the, you know, the, the health concerns and all that kind of stuff, you know, but just openly, I'm just, you know, I, I'm so pro sports. And, and I've been applauding the uh, NGSIA and their, their really desire to get, sports happening and stuff and then uh i almost fell off my chair two weeks ago when the governor came on and he had poor uh the senator poor uh, paul Sor sorlo and um assemblyman benji wimberly and they they were so smart and what they were talking and uh, they were kind of hammering home about how sports is a really a key component of of the education process and you know the more i kind of thought about that and i thought that was a great you know argument just for having sports but then the more i thought about it i was like you know these kids, they're uh, the education they're getting on the field and what you guys are talking about as far as uh, telling these kids like, hey, life is like football. It's full of adjustments. And, you know, that fact that you guys are tackling the social justice topics and, you know, talking about how to treat each other and culture and and all that kind of stuff. I mean, when you heard, you know, Wimberly and Sarlo and, and even the governor was, you know, agreeing with those guys. Um, what do you say about that as far as sports being kind of a key component of the education process? Oh, well, it, it's so true. I mean, the, the mental health standpoint to me is, is such an important deal. And our kids to – hold on. Give me one second. got to turn the speaker off. <laughs> yeah. I can sympathize with that, the feedback. <laughs> I don't know. I'm technologically impaired, but that's the one thing. One of the good things from this pandemic, I learned how to use Zoom and Google Meet and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, everybody. <laughs> Coach Gallagher is like a savant technologically now. Too. Yeah, I know. He's that's like, a result of the <laughs> pandemic too. That's a total result of that. <laughs> like Steve Jobs. <laughs> but, yeah, we're talking about you know how important you know part in sports are as part of the education process. No, listen, I mean, our thing is always we want to shape the whole person intellectually, spiritually, emotionally, socially, and of course, physically. And, uh, you know, I'm a financial trade uh, advisor by trade and uh, football players, you know, ex-athletes always made the best advisors because they they know how to deal with adversity. You know, they know how to deal with someone saying no to them. They know how to overcome any anything that goes in their way. Um, and you know, you can't, I mean, you can, but I mean, the life lessons you learn on the field, on the court, on the track, wherever you might be, you know, are so important for the rest of your life. That's why they call them life lessons. Right. So, you know, I, I don't think those things can be overstated. Um, I think our young men and women need them. And, uh, I think, you know, again, the ability to overcome, uh, adversity to, uh, thrive under pressure, uh, allows you to be a successful human being. A successful parent, successful spouse, a successful worker, and uh, all those things. Um, I think sports really, and I'm partial to football, uh, lending itself uh, to helping helping those people. And, and our young men and women need it. Colleen McGuire, the NJSIA president, put out a spectacular letter about the need for sports, and I couldn't agree with her more. And uh, again, I'm, I'm confident that we will be on the field October 2nd, and, uh, and uh, it looks good from there. And I'm very yeah, I would say, you know, colleges are in, 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 in session for a week or two. And, um, you know, uh, high school for the last uh, several days have been in. And I just I just was saying, I'm like, you know, it seems pretty quiet out there, you know, <laughs> from uh, an outbreak standpoint. 
I want to say this from a personal point of view, and I'm talking about Jerry Gallagher, the high school kid. All right. Mm -hmm. Jerry Gallagher, the high school kid. And I don't want this, any students to take this wrong. <laughs> I couldn't wait to go to school every day, but it wasn't because I was on a quest for knowledge. It was because I knew that in order for me to be at football practice or wrestling practice or track practice, I had to go to school first. And I got the job done with what I had to do in the classroom, but I don't know how I would have ever done as a high school kid if I didn't have athletics to look forward to after school. And I think there's, there's a lot of guys that are that way, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, what she's brought, she didn't come from the um, academic uh, uh, field. She came from the business field. And I think that some of her thoughts are a refreshing change but she understands because she's a mom of two high school athletes why it's important and how important athletics is to the to to the kids and to their families in general. So uh, you know, I, I can't stress enough how important I think high school athletics are and that we be on the field as much as we can be. Yeah, I think Governor Murphy is uh, is a uh, has a kid or two in the high school sports scene yes. too. So I think that's helping us. Uh, uh, our, our state as well. Um, John, let's talk a little bit about brass tax, man. Look, we're, we're heading into 2020. You're a coach of a team. Um, you have six games on the calendar right now. Can we talk a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, first of all, maybe the schedule. Um, you know, I know your schedule. You open up with Paquanic, then you go to Immaculata, or you host Immaculata. Um, you're, you're all alma mater. Um, then you go to Hudson Catholic. And you go to Hackettstown, then you host Montclair Immaculate. Uh, I'm sure. that's, that's change, actually. Today we just booked. Uh, we're going to be. Uh, we're going to host Warren Hills that week. Oh, okay. Is it a Montclair Immaculate? Yeah. So that's the Thursday Night Lights, George. Okay. Yep. We got it in the books. And then uh, you finish up with Sussex Tech. So you know, I'm sure that schedule is a little bit different than what you initially thought. But you have a schedule. You got six games. And then you got, you know, I saw some dudes there last week. Can we talk a little personnel wise, John, yeah, like what you got cooking absolutely. there? You know, listen, uh, for me, uh, we're blessed to have a great group. And like I said, I think this is the deepest team that we've had. Um, and it starts up front, right? So all, all good teams start up front. And, and we have, uh, you know, some senior linemen uh, who are really doing a, a great job for us, you know, uh, Dan Bennett has just been, he's one of our three captains. He's, he's been fantastic up front, started for us last year, really had, has had an unbelievable four year transformation to just make himself into a really good football player. You know, um, we have Kyle Skimmerhorn, who's a three year starter as a junior. Uh, he started as a freshman for us, uh, just tremendous both sides of the ball, um, you know, member of our leadership council. Um, you know, we have a couple other seniors, uh, Matt Garcia, Jack Armstrong. Uh, Mike Richards, who started that linebacker for us, was also helping us uh, with the offensive line. Um, those guys really uh, have stepped up um, in, in a big way. Uh, Jake Lacasco, like you mentioned before, as a freshman, is coming in and doing a great job on the offensive line. So, I know that kid so, personally. He um, lives around the he lives around the corner from me. That Lacasco, he was wrestling eighth graders as a third grader. I've been watching that kid for years. <laughs> <laughs> so you know as uh as a group you know they're 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 really good and you know uh defensive side of the ball you know we have those guys as well as a young man andrew gunnison who's going to be a junior uh playing some defensive end for us believe it or not we have a couple more freshmen in the mix we have three freshman linemen uh this year who are over 260 pounds and all can really move <laughs> Um, so it's it's fun. I mean, it's a really nice group. Um, and again, like I said, it, it starts up front, you know, uh, if, if you want to be good. Um, and I think we have the depth this year that we haven't had in the past. And, uh, you know, kids like Travion Edelman and, and Cameron Kersey and Alex Scheifel and, uh, you know, Gio Oliveras. I mean, we, we have a lot of guys that are stepping up in those roles, and I'm, I'm real happy. Uh, then, obviously, the other big thing you need is a quarterback, and, and we have – this is the best quarterback situation that we've had since I've been here. Obviously, we had a tremendous quarterback the last two years, uh, Jeff Chaplin, one of the 
passing leaders in the state last year. Uh, yeah. I was at Susquehanna. What, what a great kid and what a great leader. And when you talk about tough, I, I love telling this story. Um, you know, our his junior year, our last two games, he played with no ligaments in his throwing throwing thumb. And the kid was just kind of slinging the ball out there, but tough as nails. Um, but this year we, ha we have a, a young man, Dean DeNoble, who transferred in uh, from Bergen Catholic. He's just a tremendous player and person and, and has done a fantastic job. But we also have Sean Hagerty, who's a sophomore, yeah. um, who uh, makes our quarterback room kind of complete with the freshman we have, Mateo mm -hmm. Banks. So we have three real quality quarterbacks, uh, and that's the first time that I've had that here. Uh, in terms of numbers so it's exciting uh, and they're they're tremendous uh, they're, they're a great group ultra i mean you saw them at practice they're, they're yeah very they look good um john when you yeah, have that so when that's, you, that's john when you have those you know like yeah. three really good quarterbacks um you know is that is that that's a good problem to have i mean that's you know they must be all like helping each other make each other better and that, all that kind of stuff that kind of competition would you they say yeah, iron sharpens iron right no proverbs 27 17 iron sharpens iron so <laughs> yep. yeah there's no doubt about it um but uh you know they're special kids and, and i mean you know dean right now is our starter and doing just such a great i mean he, he he's he's a special kid and a special player and uh we're, we're so happy to have him um and again sean not only is sean uh a tremendous backup for us you know God forbid Dean goes down and Sean's ready to go. And, but he's also starting for us on defense right now. So again, that's the kind of kid he is, you know, uh, playing defense, playing special teams and playing quarterback. So uh, they're a great group. They make each other better. They're friends. They were sitting together at lunch today. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it really, it's, it's a great situation. Um, I mentioned before how we graduated all those guys that caught the ball for us last year. You know, we really have some great young guys who have come up and answered the bell. You know, Nick Gonzalez is tremendous uh, sophomore. Kids, he, he really reminds me of our guy last year, McAndrew, uh, Ryan McAndrew, who was all world for us last year. I mean, one of the best players I've ever coached in my life. Uh, just had a tremendous year for us last year and a tremendous young man grew so much while he was here. Uh, Nick really reminds me of him uh, when he came in as a sophomore and uh, you know, Nick's he's performing at a high level. He was our competitor of the week last week. Um, just really proud of him. Hasn't missed one virtual or in-person workout. So you're, you're talking, you know, 70, 80, 90 workouts, whatever it is, hasn't missed one. Um, so he's been mm -hmm. tremendous. Thomas Stark, a captain for us, uh, tight end safety for us, just a tremendous player, our leading tackler last year. Tommy Sangaropoulos, another captain for us. Those are our three captains with Bennett. Um, our starting tailback, linebacker, our most physical player, our strongest player, tremendous <laughs> young man, tremendous player. And you know what, George, another good thing about these guys, almost every single one of them is a fantastic student, you know. And, uh, is that right? Yeah, that's something we're real proud of here. And uh, I'm really proud of those guys um how they attack it both on and off the field um we have a young man a sophomore ryan Osterhout, who transferred in uh not i'm saying transfer and he, he he was playing basketball and we convinced him to come out for football this year and he's just been doing a tremendous job uh and we have a couple of seniors double a uh, and uh, colton who are doing a great job giving us depth as well uh walter quick and dante galella came to us this year um, and they are just tremendous football players um, on both sides of the ball. They're used to just playing wide receiver, but we have them playing some defense now as well. Um, so they're an exciting group uh, to watch. So I, one of the best things I've done, I never coached wide receivers a day in my life until, you know, uh, my second year as a head coach, I started coaching tight ends. Tom Filato was my offensive coordinator and I, I, I volunteered to coach the tight ends and I enjoyed that so much that when I came to Morris Catholic, I, I moved on over to the wide receivers and uh, I'm actually, I actually have a ball coach in them. You know, sometimes wide receivers get the, uh, um, you know, the prima donna, uh, you know, label, but not our guys. I mean, they work really hard. I, like they work really hard. Uh, they run a million routes in practice. They block their butts off in practice. You know, uh, they do everything that they're supposed to do full speed. And I, it's really a, a great group. You know, I haven't even mentioned our kid who uh, we count on for so much, Zach Thomas. Uh, he's going to mm -hmm. be a junior. He's been an all conference player each of his two years for us. Uh, he is one of the best players I've ever coached as well as a, 
defensive back. He's tough as nails uh, in our Hudson Catholic game last year. He kind of got a, you know, in the first series, he, he made a really crushing tackle on, on one of their bigger guys. But unfortunately, he also had to come out of the game for concussion symptoms, but we really missed him after that. And, uh, but he's tremendous. And, and offensively, he's, you know, this year he's at a different level, running routes, catching the ball, explosion after the catch. And again, doing all the little things. I mean, he'll, he, he's not a very tall kid, but he's powerful and, and he'll, he'll knock someone to the ground. You know, he's, he's, he's a throwback. He's as tough as they come. Um, really, really proud of him. Um, you know, I know I'm missing some guys, but, you know, just our depth. You know, we have, uh, you know, kid Johan Gouin, who's going to give us depth on the defensive line. And uh, we have, um, you know, so many sophomores who are doing a great job for us. Uh, a couple other freshmen, Matt Laho, who's who we think can, can kind of, who can kind of uh, step in for us this year and give us some depth, um, you know. It's, it's a good group. Stanford Davis, a running back linebacker for us, is a tremendous sophomore. I mean, kid's got – he's got all the potential in the world. So, uh, I'm sure I left a couple guys out. I try not to, but, uh, you know, uh, it's it's a great group. Timmy Liebhauser, one of my favorite. He's one of our best culture guys. Uh, <laughs> you know, Timmy, he can give a great pregame speech. He can do anything we need him to do. So, uh, it's a great group. Um it's a special group. I'm privileged to coach them. Uh, you know, I'm privileged to try to carry on the tradition set by Jerry and so many others before me. Um, again, it's, it's, it's easy when you got great kids, George, you know, it's, uh, it makes my life easy. And, and again, to have a great staff, you know, I got two guys that I coach with in college on my staff uh, that I played with in college, Elias Perez running D line for me and uh, Bill Chevalier is my special teams coordinator. They do a great job. I tell you this all the time. My dad's on my staff, one of the thrills of my life. He's, uh, you know, he doesn't uh, get into the football much, but uh, he's great on the loudspeaker when we our periods are over before the period clock sounds. He always gives us the one minute warning and, you know, brings donuts when we win, things like that. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's all good. It's all good. It's, uh, it's again, I, I got nothing to complain about here, you know. Coach, can you give us a little insight? I mean, last last bunch of years, you've been uh, playing basketball down the field with your offense, you know, th- hucking it down the field, moving pretty quick. But now you got some beef up line on the line. You got Sam Granopolis. Uh, you know, he's a big bruiser. Uh, we got to pound it a little bit more this year, or what? Oh man, listen, you're gonna you're gonna have to see George. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I, I'll tell you this: our offense, I'm real thrilled with it. You know. Um, it's a little different than last year, you know, um, but we have a lot of weapons. I, I think we have a lot of weapons. I mean, we'll see, you know, uh, that's why you play the games, but I think we can do both, you know, and we have different ways that we're going to attack defenses. Like I said, myself and Kyle Cluffy, one of the things with the pandemic, I mean, we've met how many coaches means that we have virtually. I can't even, you know, I can't even count them because, you know, they hate me because I, I had, we had met all at six 30 in the morning, you know, after I'd work out, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the perks of being a head coach, I guess. But uh, it was, uh, we did a lot of, I, th- I feel like we did a lot of great work on it and the players have responded and embraced it. And uh, so far so good. But I think, I think we'll be, I think we'll be able to do a couple of different things. So, hey, so coach, John, hey, um, yeah. I know it's not the traditional schedule this year and all, well, who's your, who's your six games? So uh, coach, we, we start with Paquanic. And then uh, we host them. Then we host Immaculata. And uh, then we go to Hudson Catholic, Hackettstown. Then we host Warren Hills. And then we go to Sussex Tech. We played, when I was a senior, we played Warren Hills. Their two running backs were uh, Dale Reinhardt and, and Dave Baldwin. And those two guys were the 189 and 215 state champions <laughs> in wrestling. Is that we right? Played, it was before the AstroTurf days. At, <laughs> we It was about six inches of mud and sawdust they put on it. We played goal line 6-5 the entire game on the field against them at all. How'd you Is do? Right? We got beat, but it was uh, – our, we were strict to platoon then, like I told you the other yeah, day. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, offensively, we really struggled. Um, 
but it was a 14 nothing game. But I, I, I remember that game like it was yesterday. George, I don't know. I love hearing Coach Gallagher talk. It makes you want to go out and strap on the pads and get going. You know? uh, yeah, totally. I love you know, those old time stories, Jerry. Keep them coming, man. <laughs> uh, hey, John, we'll let you go. We know you're, you're a busy guy, but can I fire some uh, some rapid fire, uh, fire questions at you real quick? Absolutely. OK, cool. All right. What if we can keep it to the Mars Catholic days. That's fine. If you want to go back a little further, that's fine, too. Uh, um, but uh, best best athlete you ever coached it could be at mars catholic or if you need to go deeper at mars catholic's ryan mcandrew ryan mcandrew yeah i don't like i don't like i don't like i don't don't want anyone to get offended but i ryan was pretty special yeah I i think we have some kids on the team now that can rival him so is that right okay how about best best athlete you ever coached against oh it's funny i i won't at Morris, at Morris Catholic, okay. Um, oh, <laughs> the kid at down at St. Joe's this year is pretty good. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't like to talk about that too much, though. So. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the yeah. kid, you know, obviously, kid Dempster at Booten, special kid, right? I mean, that, oh, that, yeah. kid, that kid is a great. But honestly, too, that, what I love about that kid. You know, and I think everyone respects Brian around here, too. And, you know, just even speaking with my captains the other day, you want your players to be an extension of you. Right. And you want your coach, you want your captains to be an extension of you. And Corey Dempster, for as as uh, acclaimed as he was, I mean, the kid's very humble and very hardworking. And, you know, I think I'm sure that comes from him. But also, I think a lot of that probably comes from Brian as well. So, um you know, I think uh, he was a special kid. The best kid I ever coached in terms of athleticism is Theo Riddick when I was at Immaculata. Obviously, mm. uh, played mm. for the Lions for several years, played at Notre Dame. Um, I coached my first year as a head coach at Immaculata. We made the playoffs, and we played against Red Bank Catholic and Quentin Nelson. And you want to say that he's not an athlete? Quentin Nelson was probably the best athlete I ever coached against. <laughs> that guy was unbelievable. Um, and they had another tackle on the other side of the line that was almost as good. So, um, so we threw yeah. a flea flicker the first play of the game and scored, and it was all downhill from that. But uh, <laughs> so, but with regards to you know recent, you know even last year, I think probably the Dempster kid and uh, and uh, Ryan. Yeah, Dempster was a great athlete, and Ryan, Ryan as well. Um, how about? Listen, you coach, I know there's a lot of f- funny moments that happen on the, f- you know, in the practices at games. Is there a moment that kind of sticks out as like one of those funny moments that, you know, you kind of just cracked up uh, kind of thing? Can you think of any oh, it's of that? Funny. We were talking about this with the boys the other day. This was two years ago. We played kind of like an epic game against Montclair Immaculate at their place. I don't know if you've ever been down there. It's an interesting yeah. place to play a, f- a game. We were missing 10 starters. Um two years ago and we had a pretty good team, um, but we were missing 10 starters and, and I, you know, we had lost a tough game and, you know, I told them, I I guarantee that we were going to win the game to the boys. And we, um, we won it. We won. We came back from three touchdowns down and we, we had a pick six the last minute of the game to seal it. And and (laughs) some parents, because of the way it's constructed over there, parents are right behind you you know, um, literally standing on the grass, like five feet away from you. And some parents, guys who I really liked, grabbed the Gatorade and like dumped it on me. And (laughs) and I was so angry (laughs) that that happened because the game wasn't over. (laughs) And (laughs) my reaction was not like, let's go. It was pretty, it wasn't good. And the players thought that was hysterical. So they brought that up uh, when we were the other day when we were just talking. Things, that was one of our favorite games as well. So, um, but no, I mean, listen, there's a lot of you know, you have a lot of great moments on the field. You know, I remember last year, um, when we won that playoff game, you know, like you said, you mentioned George, the pictures in my office. So, we do one picture per win, you know, kind of like the Patriots do, kind of thing. And uh, let's see, I'll show you here. Oh, did I lose you? Can't no, see. we're here. Okay, I don't know if you can see. The one in the corner over there, it's hard to see, I think. Yeah. But it's us celebrating on the field after the game. Um, 
you know, to be with those guys who really endured a lot in four years and, and to see the excitement on their faces after that game, um, it was pretty special. So that was one of the better memories that I had here. That's cool. Yeah. That was going to be my next question. You know, one of the, one of your favorite memories there. And that's, uh, that's awesome. Well, Hey John, man, we really appreciate you coming on. Give us some, uh, little under the hood there. What's cooking at the crusader nation. And, uh, you got a great vibe going, man. And, uh, we're glad to have you in our area. So George, I appreciate it. Let me say one thing, one other thing that I'm proud of that we do here. And I want to give a shout out to them because, uh, we are very involved with the Rockaway challenger program. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, we are, a lot of our boys volunteer, uh, with their uh, with their young men and women, uh, whether it be softball, basketball, whatever. And we've had them here a couple weekends this year. We're going to have them on September 12th after our practice. Um, you know, I just want to say hi to those guys. They're a special group, obviously, and we're proud to have them as part of our our family. And, and they mean a lot to our boys. And, and of course, I, I need to say hi to my kids, Johnny, uh, Julia, and Gianna. <laughs> And your lovely wife, right? Katie, she's okay. No, she's the best. <laughs> oh, she's the yeah, glue I'm that's very, holding I'm all together, fun. man. I know your family. She's without her, man. You're falling apart. <laughs> she, she, she's, the real, uh, she's the real coach. Yeah, that's she's awesome. Uh, you got a great family there, man. Um, well, hey, John. Hey, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. We'll let you go. We know you're running an operation over there, so uh, we appreciate it. Thanks, George. I appreciate you, coach. It's great to be with you, too. You, too, John. Good luck, okay? God bless you guys. We'll, we'll be talking. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Jerry, we'll let Coach Hack go. And, uh, Jerry, you still good? You want to hang on for Coach Chapita? I'm here. You know, I'm, <laughs> we're talking football. Let's go. All right, cool. All right, we're going to take a little uh, commercial break, and then we'll bring on uh, br bring on Coach. Up. Oh. little audio issue there. Uh, we'll be right back uh, right after this message with uh, Coach Chapita. Hawk Graphics, Inc. in Randolph, New Jersey is a professional full-service printing company providing high-quality commercial printing services to customers throughout the United States since 1981. We provide custom printing with the newest state of equipment. We help companies of all sizes deliver clear and consistent messages with printed materials that are crafted by our in-house team of graphic designers. We have a large team of talented, creative, and innovative experts to help businesses showcase their brand with our unique services. Hawk Graphics Inc.'s team of courteous professionals is here to help you with your next printing job. And now we also offer social distancing barriers, shields, signs, and floor decals for corporations, retailers, schools, or anyone else to help make employees, customers, and students feel safe from the spread of COVID-19 or other infections that spread easily. My name is Stephanie Ramirez. I'm 28 years old. I struggled with weight my whole life. I had the gastric sleeve done. I lost a total of 100 pounds. I'm actually healthier. No more diabetes, no more hypertensive. I would definitely recommend Dr. Nesbaum. Your weight may not be your fault. It could be a metabolic or hormonal problem. To learn more, come in for a free seminar. Go to NussbaumMedicalCenters.com or call 973-998-9833 to schedule a consultation today. Your future, it's on. Goals are on. Learning is on. With CCM, the County College of Morris. Online. On point. On your terms. Over 80 majors. Major help. My career guidance. Number one in alumni salaries in New Jersey. Success. It's on. With CCM, the County College of Morris. Sign up now for summer and fall semesters. Loja Cohen LLC is a law firm located in Chester, New Jersey. Although we are local, we provide legal services to businesses, entrepreneurs, governmental entities, and school boards statewide. We provide big firm quality work, but do so with a small firm feel and flexible pricing structure. Our specialties include employment law, labor relations, and commercial litigation. At Loja Cohen, we are proud to support the local athletes in our community. Rich Latman, realtor with Keeneland Latman, Sotheby's International Realty, enjoys helping clients through the process of selling their home and finding their dream home. Whether you need more space, are a first-time home buyer, or ready to downsize, Rich can help. 
Rich is a National Association of Realtors Circle of Excellence Award winner and one of the top producers in his area. With Rich, you can always expect expert analysis, excellent service, and exceptional results. For all real estate in Morris and Somerset counties, contact Rich Latman at 908-839-8487 or by email at rlatman at klsir.com. Growing up, Brian Riley absolutely loved sports and competition. He remembers his dad telling him that if he wanted to be better, he need to practice more and work harder. So in high school, when he heard the Vince Lombardi quote, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. It truly resonated with him and that work ethic has translated into serving his clients better than many in the financial field. While Brian's industry experience and credentials are vast, he's quick to tell his clients, the fact that there are a bunch of letters behind my name doesn't mean that I'm smarter than anyone else. It simply means that I've been willing to take the time to invest in myself so that I could better serve them. And for me, being of service to others is the single most important thing in my life today. Getting the opportunity to work closely with families and businesses with complex needs, helping them to define their long-term goals, and providing them with meaningful solutions is a thrill for Brian. It makes him feel like he's back on the athletic field again. For a free financial consultation, contact Brian Riley at bryley at financialguide.com or call him at 973-738-4248. All right, welcome back to the Morris Sussex Sports Talk Show with our next guest, Chatham Head Football Coach Dan Japija. Danny, Danny, how you doing, pal? I'm, I'm well, George. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm good. We have a co-host. I don't know if you know this guy, uh, Coach Jerry Gallagher. Oh, yeah, I do. Love Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, how's it going? Uh, st still on mute, Jerry. Sorry. I know. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to mute you out here. <laughs> That's all good. Don't Great to see you. <laughs> So, uh, so coach, you know, it's, it's, uh, we've been talking to a lot of the football coaches around, uh, Morris and Sussex last couple of, you know, since really the pandemic in March, frankly, um, how are things going for you? What are you guys doing? I know you're on this break, but were you able to have a strong summer workout program and all that? What's, what's cooking over there? Yeah, we had, uh, we got through phase two. We didn't get to phase three. We, we were able to get helmets out for the start of, uh, you know, camp, but, um, you know, we had a good turnout. The kids were excited. We had, um, you know, phase one because we had uh, two sessions of about 40 kids each with a couple kids that couldn't make it. And then, you know, phase two, we were fortunate enough that by uh, around like August that uh, the week before um, the, uh, the cutoff, which was this week, you know, we had our full team out there. So we had about 90 something guys. So it was great. Yeah. And Dan, you know, it's funny, you're, uh, you know, a lot of coaches they are like Morris County guys. They went to school here. Uh, you know, they play, they played for the teams and they go out and they'll play for another, they'll end up coaching for another local team. You're, you're not an area guy from down in, uh, I think, Hunterdon County or Somerset County. Uh, uh, Mercer County, actually. Mercer, yeah. Mercer down in County. Yeah, yeah. No, a little bit. So yeah, near but, Princeton. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But it seems like, uh, you know, it seems like you're acclimating. You're almost like a Morris County guy now. Um, how do you feel? You feel like you're kind of uh, you, you like in this home. You've been here two, three or four years now. Um, yeah. It's, it's, you know what? It's beautiful. And, and uh, you know, um, the Morris County coaches have been great when we go to the meetings. Uh, very supportive, very helpful. Um, you know, it's 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 uh, minus the fact that, uh, you know, all the uh Morris County guys call it uh, Taylor Ham, and it's supposed to be pork roll. Um, uh, you know, uh, we got to end this. Dan. Sorry, uh, Danny. Sorry, this has interviews over, bud. <laughs> no, no, but uh, no, it's, it's awesome, and uh, you know, I never expected to kind of uh, be when I when I got the job, I was like, man, I don't even know half these teams, um, you know. But then as you start to kind of look into them, you see like how great the area is, um, you know. Um, up there in terms of the teams and the, kind of the background and the history. And, you know, I was fortunate enough that one of the coaches uh, from Randolph, Will Mahan, actually uh, is from Lawrence as well. So, you know, he's been up there for a while, though, because he went to school up there and he started up there. So, 
um, you know, he kind of helped with some questions that I had when I was talking about. So it was awesome. Everybody's been great. Did you play against Nahan in, uh, in high school? Uh, no, I actually was uh, about four years older. So we met through a mutual, mutual friend. And, um, you know, we kind of got introduced probably about the year, the first year I got the job. And then we've actually been pretty, you know, we didn't even realize that we were from the same area. So, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't get to play him. Yeah. You know, one no. thing a lot of people don't know, and, um, you know, is especially about this area is the, this Morris, this greater Morris County coaches association of how, um, and I, I didn't know that was happening either. Just how tight knit that group is and how much, you know, that, that uh, everybody helps each other. Even your opponents are, you know, I've seen, you know, big rivals, you know, coach Henley, coach Cosmo LaRusso being, you know, best buddies. And that just, that kind of shocked me a little bit when I saw that I, you know, I grew up playing football in the area. I thought, you know, we were supposed to hate the other coach and, you know, that all these coaches are loving on each other for their close friends. I mean, what do you say about that? You know, is that, is that unique? Are they doing that in Mercer County? Uh, you know, I, I think it is unique. I mean, not to say that down in Mercer County head coaches, you know, they don't try to, but, you know, it's a little bit different. I think it does help. Um, you know, I do think in terms of our conference, I love the fact that you have to share all your film. Um, I think, you know, in, in when I was at my old school, that was something that was not done. And it was a point of contention among coaches of, I'm not going to give you this game. I'll give you this game. And, you had to go scout and, you know, like in person and video yourself. So the fact that we, you know, you share, it helps. And then, um, you know, I think, you know, make no mistake. I definitely think all the coaches want to, you know, uh, win the game. Um, but, you know, I do think that there is a big separation between um, after the game is over. Um, it's a little bit less personal and it's like, Hey, great game. And they recognize, you know, kind of, the, the what they're trying to do for each, you know, their own program and stuff like that. So it's been awesome. I mean, you know, I can't be, can't be more, you know, happy to be where I'm at right now. Mm. I, you know, Jerry, what do you say about that? You know, I mean, you were the president of that coach association for many years and it seemed like, you know, the way the, the football program, football in general, just took a lot of hits with concussion and, and uh, you know, people, parents maybe being afraid of putting their, sending their kids to play football it seemed like that's always a hot topic for you guys as a coach, really trying to make the, 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 the sport safe, protect the sport as a group. Um, what do you say about that? You know, I think it's one of the unique things about the Mars County Football Coaches Association and, and, and our coaches like Dan as a group. I think we were always proactive when any of those things came up, you know, the concussion issue, and, and the uh, youth football issues and numbers and that type of thing. So I, I think that's a deal where uh, we've kind of been a model for other areas of the state that not a whole lot of groups have copied, but I think, I, I think it's what we're proudest of and that we work together as a group of coaches to try and make the game in our area better. You know, if, if Dan comes to one of our coaches clinics and he gets one of something from us, that's going to help him get, be a better football team. Well, darn it. If we're going to beat you, we want to beat you at your best. And I think we're always trying to improve the game that way and all. So I, I, um, you know, you've been at our meetings, George, we're not hesitant to bring doctors in to get their point of view on things and ask how we can do things better and all. And I, I think that's one of the things that we're, we're proud of stuff as an organization. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just the safety. And I remember a couple of years ago when they, uh, the NGS, I guess it was the NGSA, they kind of changed the rules and l lowered the limits on uh, the time limits on contact. And I think mm -hmm. I might've called you up, Jerry, and been like, Hey, uh, this sounds like a big problem. And you were like, George, we're, we're, we're not even hitting that much <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, that's no problem. We're, we're safety is our number one priority. And I just thought that was really cool that, as a group, you guys were, you know, ahead of that. You know, I think it's neat too. Again, you, you've been to the meetings and Dan's taken part in them and all. We do a lot of panel discussions together too. So it's not just one coach getting up and giving his point of view. When we do those panel discussions, we try to do it with different size schools. So we'll have a group one school, a group two, 
one of the bigger ones, you know, and, and do things that way. So you get a good perspective on, on you know, everybody has different problems uh, and, and all. And uh, I think it, it gives a good wide range of opinions and things. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and so, Dan, you know, you took over a couple of years ago. And it's funny, you know, when you talk about, you know, at those meetings, one of the things that you hear about, about is just like, numbers or at least the last couple of years was like lack of numbers that's not the issue with chatham i mean i think you guys had the most numbers last year and i think this year you're right up there again uh what's cooking over there uh at chatham that all these kids are coming out for football yeah i think uh it's a testament to our youth program i, I mean i really enjoy um you know it's a little bit different than what i kind of was accustomed to down in my area where the 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 major kind of team was the Pop Warner team. Um, here in Chatham, they kind of do a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade team of tackle football. And then prior to that is um, flag football. So, you know, I was kind of crazy when I was talking to the head of our youth and, you know, in all of those programs, there's over, you know, 300 kids. So there's a lot of parents that want their kids to be active. They want their kids to do something. And then um, it's nice knowing that when you're when I go down to the youth, I can look at the fifth grade team right now and the sixth grade team and see, oh, wow, they got, you know, 34 guys. And granted, some kids end up making a decision on one sport or maybe they decide it's not for them. But for the most part, once a kid hits eighth grade, I kind of know where, um, you know, that they're going to be coming in for freshman year. And, you know, I was very fortunate because, you know, I was worried about a program that, you know, I didn't know much about when I got the job and, you know, they had, um, you know, I know they had that one year they went to the sectional finals, which was a big year for them. And the parents were, you know, very happy with it. And, you know, I didn't know what the numbers were going to be like, but, we, you know, we had it, you know, upwards around 70 guys. And I think, uh, you know, the kids like to do sports in Chatham. We have a lot of multi-sport athletes and the school kind of does, you know, um, you know, if you are an athlete, you're able to take a gym exemption to get a study hall. And I think the kids enjoy that because, you know, football is not an easy sport. So, you know, it's not like you're, you're taking football up because you want to study hall, but um, you know, it's, it's awesome. I think the numbers right now, we got about 28 freshmen coming in and our roster uh, should be total through all the four years. I think it's up to about 93. So um, I'm happy. I think the more kids you can get out for a team, uh, the better the competition and, and that drives kind of success. So, you know, we're excited for what we got kind of going into year three and moving forward. Yeah. And I think you mentioned to me um, a couple of days ago that, uh, you know, you got some new staff members, you feel like, um, you know, you can kind of build out a little bit more as far as, uh, you know, uh, managing that, those, those numbers and being able to run uh, some interesting things with your offense and such. Yeah, the last two years, me and my other uh, coach, Eric Tripp, we've been running the offense, and not that it doesn't work, but it's uh, he's been calling the freshman and JV teams, um, you know, and I do the plays for, for varsity. And, um, you know, we, we've done a lot more group work, unlike on defense, where you're able to get more uh, individual time and stuff like that. And, you know, for me, I'm big, big on development. And, you know, I was not a good freshman football player. And, you know, I was fortunate my coaches did not say like, well, he's never going to play, so don't worry about him. And, you know, it happened to be that by junior, senior year, I turned out to be pretty good. So um, and that came from them. I, I, I give them credit to being able to work with me and develop. And uh, I think the more coaches that you can have working with the kids, we got a new O-line coach coming from Woodbridge, um, Jeff Grimm. And we have a former Chatham guy that was there when they went to the sectionals, Joe Sullivan. Um, so. You know, we're excited. I have a new freshman coach, too, and, and it would be nice to kind of get those guys working and, and have the ability to kind of split up a little bit more and work on some technique, you know, at, on, you know, throughout all the levels. So it would be nice. Mm. You, you know, Dan, that's a good point. You know, you have when you're a football coach of a high school, you know, you're getting a kid who comes in at 13 or 14 who may be hasn't even lifted a weight, hasn't even hit his growth spurt, hasn't hit puberty, you know, there's a lot of changes that could happen in those time. So given those, uh, those freshmen, a lot of love, even those kids that maybe, maybe they just flat out stink as athletes, you know, they're going to turn, a lot's going to change in those four years. No, no, you're right. I mean, I always, I told the guys when I got hired, I mean, the most important team is the freshman team in my eyes, because you got to make sure that those kids are having a, a fun time and, 
they want to come back. And I think, you know, we do, you know, the one thing I, I like that my staff does and, you know, we try to make the kids enjoy their experience, you know, even though the best kid to the, you know, the, the, the least, you know, the least on a team, you want to make sure that they get a good experience. And, um, you know, that's what we try to do there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a, if it's a, Jerry, you know, because you've been in the game, I mean, it's a sport unlike any other sport, you know, I played baseball and, you know, you can't work at football, in the off season, you know, like you, if you play lacrosse, you can play club, you can run around on the field and have a simulated game. Like, you know, you can't simulate a game in, in February, you know, March, April, May, June, you know, you're not wearing equipment and there's no club football teams. There are seven on sevens, but still then it's not the same. So the only time kids can develop is when they play their games. And that's why it was huge this year that we're able to kind of get even six games in or whatever, because that year loss would be a killer. Mm. Yeah. What do you say about that, Jerry? I mean, you've been seeing around a lot of football. Like you see a kid just, you know, who well, you, you, you have that example from um, Will, uh, uh, you know, the guy who just got drafted by the, the Patriots. Um, Will, jeez, yeah. uh, uh, why is his name escaping me? Um, you know, the Del Barton guy. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I think Brian was saying like, yeah, as a, as a freshman, he was, you know, not very impressive. And by the time senior year was a world beater, went to uh, William and Mary. George, um, they were just talking about it the other day. Half the write-ups that are coming out of the Patriots camp are about him. So he's got a great chance to make the team and all. Yeah. Is that really right? Really positive, positive things for him and all too. So, yeah. Yeah, so, it's great. You know, so, the, the thing when you, you mentioned seven on sevens, you didn't have seven on sevens until – you know, just a little while ago, yeah. but the reason seven on sevens came about was because basketball players, baseball players, they were playing all year long. And we said, we need to come up with something where football guys can have a chance to compete and play games somehow how and all, you know, and that that's really how seven on sevens um, first came about we were doing those amongst teams and now in some ways it's created a monster because you have uh you know all-star seven on sevens and everything else but uh, uh it's is that is that seven on seven is it helpful at, from a coaching perspective or to to run offenses or uh, you know what does that do for you for, as a coach i i'll say this real quick and i don't mean to take away from dan because um i was a dinosaur running the ball we used to tell our wide receivers during the summer, get your jollies off now, boys, because once the season starts, you're wide blockers, not wide receivers. <laughs> but um, I do think, I think, um, especially with the nature of offenses in this day and age, that it's helpful in terms of teaching co offensive concepts. And I also think from a defensive secondary back seven position and all, it's really important for, or, you know, it's really valuable to you in terms of installing coverages and things. Mm. What would you say? You say the same thing, Dan? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, it's, it's weird as you kind of, you know, this spring I wasn't able to, but I like to kind of always visit with uh, college camps, uh, a friend of mine that was coaching that I got started with, and he's been kind of, uh, you know, somebody that I look towards as a mentor, mentor, you know, we always travel kind of in the spring to go to different camps and we do the clinic circuit, you know, Glazier when we go, but I really enjoy going to actual, you know, college campuses and, and kind of seeing how they practice. And it's always interesting that, you know, you got some major schools that actually don't even do a lot of it. Um, you know, they kind of try to more do like simulated half field stuff and with linemen in it, but, you know, there is an advantage. I do think you can get yourself in a bind where, you know, either you, you, you know, oh, wow, look at us. We're passing really well, but there's no rush. So it gives the quarterback sometimes. But there, there's a place. I, my main thing is I like that the kids can compete. Um, I do think that, you know, you kind of can help them um, kind of get that competition like Jerry was talking about where, you know, in baseball or playing, you know, 10 games on a weekend, you know, in the summer, previously you were unable to do any of that. And, you know, you're just kind of practicing. So the fact that kids can go and can compete against other teams is pretty nice. So, no, I mean, I think it's all good. You know, I, going back real quick, I, you know, when I was in high school, I was a senior, we had a freshman who was about five foot five. And um, 
very good athlete, maybe five six. I'll give him with credit, benefit of the doubt. But um, you know, I I graduate and you know I would come back to watch some of our high school games. And by the time the kid's a senior, he's six foot four, you know, and he's you know he's playing quarterback. He he ended up going to Rutgers and he played you know, for a couple of teams in the NFL, Tyquan Underwood, who's now the receivers coach at Rutgers. So, you know, you never want to just say to a kid that like, hey, you know, you're uh, you're too small to play or, you know, you don't look the part right now, but because you never know how kids are going to grow. So, um, you know, I think that's a big thing about just kind of keeping them active and getting them football knowledge. So, you know, maybe by the time they're senior and they hit their growth sport or they figure out their feet, all of a sudden you're working with somebody that's a pretty good football player. Yeah, I, I bumped into two kids uh, this summer, both who were above six foot, and they both played freshman football. They're now seniors, and they both said, yeah, we were small, we were on the team, and, you know, we didn't, weren't, you know, uh, well, for whatever reason, they're not playing anymore. If I was the coach, I'd be like, I, I need these kids on my team. You know, those are, the, right. like you mentioned, uh, you know, I, I'd imagine that's the kind of kid you want to, you can't teach so over six foot, right? You want those kids in your program. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I agree, um, I agree. So, so coach, uh, you know, I know the schedule changed on you a little bit. I mean, last, last year, and I think coming into this year, I think you guys were slated to play the similar schedule, right? The Mount Hollows, the Mo Hills and all that, um, yes. you know, Morris time, mean, you had a schedule last year, Par Hills, you know, sexual champion. Um, <laughs> uh, right. but then things change up on you a little bit. Your schedule is, is going to be a little different, but not, I'm not going to say it was easy. I was looking at your schedule. I mean, yeah, you're playing West Essex, Mo Hills again, Mendham, Montville, Newton, who's doesn't matter what group they're in. They're always good. And then you got Par Hills again. Um, what do you, you know, what, what do you guys got cooking uh, over there as far as personnel and, you know, what's the vibe? You know, the kids are excited. I think uh, just like with any program, everyone is kind of disappointed that they didn't get their off season uh, to do lifting. I mean, the kids are really coming on and, that was something at Chatham, I think, when I first got hired. I mean, you know, I, it, it was one of those things where a lot of kids are doing a lot of things and there just wasn't a, a kind of a, a weight room atmosphere. So, you know, our strongest kid benched 225, maybe twice. You know, it wasn't even a lineman. It was a skill guy. And, um, you know, I think we were at the point where, you know, those linemen, you, you know, you don't realize because you look at big kids, you assume they're strong, but it does take time to develop form in the weight room. And, um, you know, I think they're pretty excited because they feel like we kind of, you know, our big guys up front have some strength. Um, you know, I think the last couple of years, they, they, they would be the ones to even tell you that our senior class, like, yeah, we definitely. Maybe you got a little freeze action there, Jerry. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, see it. Give him a second to come out. Uh, yeah. Maybe he'll. He'll bounce back here. You know, Jerry, one of the things, uh, Danny yeah. there. Yep. Yeah, sorry. I, I guess it froze out. But, no, in terms of the schedule, I think that, you know, we're excited. I mean, you know, I always say, you know, you want to play the best, um, you know, as much best of the schedule as you can. And, and some of those programs, their history speak for themselves. So, you know, it's, it's you know, when you beat a good team, it's rewarding. You know, it's it's when you beat teams you're expected to, you know, that's okay. So I always say, you know, let's try to see where we're at. And, and, you know, obviously we want to win games and I think the vibe around camp is pretty excited, you know, so mm -hmm. we got to come together and just try to execute as best as possible. Yeah. And, you know, like last year was funny at the end of last year, I remember I got a phone call from somebody and saying, they're like, is there a kid from Chatham who's uh, leading the country in, in, uh, in kick, kick returns. And uh, I was like, I don't think so. And then I, I looked at him like, yeah, like by a long shot. I mean, what do you say about Peter Schelling? I mean, was he legit the uh, the leading uh, returner in the country? So he was. The only issue was is he only had he had two less than the required to be considered for it technically. So in the state of New Jersey, he met the requirement, but in the country, he was under. I think they needed like twelve, and he had ten returns. So, you know, and at the end of the year, there's nothing we could do. It was like try to pick the ball up and just run. Um, and a couple of times, you know, they, you know, we get the squib kicks eventually. But, you know, I kind of, I was just, you know, it was, it was amazing just to see him. I mean, he touched the ball and, you know, we did, you know, we were talking, I told Jerry, like, you know, we're just running the middle 
middle return, basically nothing exotic. And, you know, this is kind of way I got a buddy of mine at Ewan High School and, um, you know, kind of worked out really well. And we started breaking a couple for touchdowns. And he had one called back against Mount Olive. So, you know, he would have had another touchdown there, but it was called back, actually. So that would have added to the numbers. I mean, did you well, see that is, You know, he's great. You know, comes from a really good family. Yeah. Well, you know what? We, we definitely knew he was good. He played running back that first year. And then it was one of those things I tried to avoid running backs getting hits as much as possible. Um, but I was like, you know what? We got to put him back there as a returner. He's too good not to. So he said he wanted to do it, and we put him back there, and it kind of paid off. So we were pretty happy. I might have to do that more. <laughs> so, Coach Gallagher, no, you're good, though. He's been – he's. He was named our uh, Morris County Football Coaches Association Special Teams Player of the Year this year. He had a tremendous, tremendous year. Yeah. I mean, what does that say about uh, an athlete or even, you know, you, I mean, you're not returning those on your own, right? I mean, but how hard, I mean, that's that's one of the hardest things to do in football to lead the country in that, Jerry. What does that say about that kid? Well, it says he's got a talent and a knack for it. I don't know, Dan, his average per return was something ridiculous, wasn't it? I don't know. What was it? Yeah, I think it was like, it, returns. It was like 50.3, um, something yeah, like that. That's um, crazy. It was, it was one of those things I was talking to my buddy, and I'm telling him, yeah, he returned another touchdown. He's like, Dan, I've been coaching for nine years. I've never had a kid return more than two. And like we've had like four or five, but it was all different kids. We never had, I never had a single kid do it. So then I started looking into it and, you know, I would ask some of the, the, you know, the, you know, guys from the New Jersey star ledger and they're like, we don't see anything with four or whatever. And I never got a clear cut answer as to where he stood in regards to the state and kind of like all history. But, you know, I've seen some good players back there and, you know, it's kind of same thing happened. They just don't kick to them. So, you know, it's something where, like, I couldn't really see, you know, anybody having the numbers, but it was just crazy once I started looking into it and everybody's like, yeah, I've never seen four, you know, like, so yeah, it's, it was, it was pretty cool to be a part of. And it kind of was something that the kids really liked, you know, even being in the blockers, like, man, we have a kid that's, you know, leading our state or, you know, you know, the numbers show in the country, let's really try to get them another one. And they really took that in practice. So it's nice to have, something like that, especially when we were kind of struggling there, the kids knew like, Hey, he could take one. He could take one here. So it was nice. Well, see, it's, did he have it's just gotta like help you also though, when you turn, you know, we always emphasize the importance of special teams. And when you have a guy like that, that's doing it, I think it helps you a whole lot. sell why it's important and, and, and something to hang your hat on. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Danny, did he have a knack for just uh, the vision of the field and where to go and when to turn it on and when to slow it down and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, like he was our running back. And, you know, like I said, we we, we had we struggled at times, but, you know, he was a hard runner. And, and if you watch film of him, he just had a knack of finding, you know, kind of being patient at the line and then exploding to get those yards. And to be honest with you, like he never really – lost yardage unless it was just a complete breakdown up front I mean you know he was able to fall forward and you talk about running backs all the time and and you know Jerry you would probably appreciate the fact that you know even on first contact at the line of scrimmage he'd still manage to get three four yards which is what you're looking for and a bad play where he's going to get a negative five yard loss turns into a zero you know a zero net game because he makes a guy miss he breaks the tackle so you know, he had a knack for it. We tried to put him in positions to get him the ball. And, you know, he did a lot of, you know, I think he had to have over, you know, probably, you know, almost 60 to 70% of our touchdowns this year. And, you know, it just tells you that if you put the ball in his hands, he could take it. So mm. it was, it was nice to have. We're going to make that on, for sure. Is he going on to play at the next level, Dan? Yeah, he's playing at Gettysburg. Okay. Yeah. I think his older brother is there too, no? Yes, his lower brother transferred there. He's at, uh, I believe, Delaware for lacrosse, and then he wanted to come back play football, so he went there. And they got a new coach, so you know they're, you know, um, you know they're said that like he's doing well and they're excited. They're upset that they're not playing this year, but you know they're, they're looking forward to kind of get started. So I think they got a steal there. Mm. So let's can we talk a little uh, 
a little personnel, uh, Dan, you know, you, you're heading to this season. You don't have shelling anymore. So, uh, you know, can we talk a little uh, specifics of what we, who we got, who's going to be uh, the names we're going to be seeing? Yeah, we have, um, you know, we got uh, our linemen. We got four or five returning up front for offense, which is great. We have our center back, Anthony Miller. Um, our guard, uh, Lucas Regions, has been a three-year starter. And Will Duff has been a three-year starter, so they'll be back. Um, and then we have uh, um, another senior, Rory Chnosky, that started last year's first game against Madison that we won, and um, he's back. So that will be nice. We just kind of got to really fit that one more person in. Um, we will have a quarterback competition. You know, we have a kid returning, Luke McAloon, who got about, you know, all year experience there. Um, and then we have a sophomore, Gio, Giovanni Del Rey, who's been working hard this offseason. So that will be nice. Uh, running backs, we're definitely going to have to take a look. You know, we have a couple guys that had some carries, Sean Pellegrin. Mm -hmm. um, our middle linebacker, Jack Kuppenheimer, who – um, has started for three years. He might have to run the ball a little bit. And we have a couple of kids that ran at the other levels, like Josh Allison, who we're looking forward to. So um, we had a senior last year, Ryan MacArthur. His brother had a good couple games towards the end where he caught some passes. So he's coming back for offense. Um, we're going to have to replace some receivers. So, you know, we're excited. We have, uh, you know, two tight ends coming back that saw extensive time. Owen Whalewander, who actually is a really good baseball player. He committed to Lehigh, I think, like a week ago. Oh. Um, the play, but he's back and um, Stuart Garrett. So, you know, we've been running a lot of four receivers and three receiver sets, but with those two towards the end of the year, being that they were sophomores, they're going to be juniors. We were running a little bit more, some double tight, you know, formation. So, you know, we have the flexibility to do some stuff here. We have a couple seniors uh, receivers, Chase Carlin, that could play multiple positions. So, you know, we're, I think personnel wise, um, you know, we'll have, it's a shame that we didn't get, as great of a, of a summer that we want it, you know, to kind of work those out. But I think, you know, we'll be multiple and have be able to go out there with four receivers, but also maybe run in two tight ends and, and kind of try to run the ball a little bit or something like that. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. We're excited though. We got some options. Yeah. And you open up with uh, West Essex um, and West Essex. They had a player last year. We saw against Par Hills, uh, just a phenomenal, he was a, a sophomore at the time, big receiver, defensive end kind of guy. Have you been watching that kid? Seems like he's a player. Yeah, I, I, I forget his name, um, but we I watched a couple games. I think um, they played a couple teams. We did some crossovers, so I saw them, and they're always a good program. I mean, it's always nice to, you know, uh, we open up, I think, uh, what, the second Friday night against them. And, you know, so we're excited. I mean, it'll be a good challenge, and they run a really good offense. And, uh, you know, they, they, they're they tough kids up there. One of our – the coach that I hired, he's actually from West Essex. So, oh know, really? he knows kind of about this. Yeah, oh, yeah. So he that's convenient, there. right? That's um, convenient. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it'll be challenging and we're, you know, the kids are ready for a challenge though. They know the program, you know, the only way you're going to kind of get that recognition of, you know, being a program on the rise is to beat those programs that are established. So, you know, the kids mm -hmm. are excited, but yeah, no, it's, it'll be challenging and they're ready to kind of pick up, um, you know, and hopefully make them, you know, competitive and see if we can pull one out here and there. And Dan, is this your third year as head coach? Yeah, going into third year. Yep. Going into the third year. Okay. So, you know, you'd be kind of building this uh, this program, right? I mean, you go, you start your first year and you kind of, I mean, I'd, I'd imagine you kind of have like a longer term vision, correct? Um, you know, when you yes. come into the program, are you, are you thinking, you know, you know, kind of two year, four year, five, you know, six years out kind of thing? Yeah, you know, when I when I took over, and again, it's one of those things like, you know, I know coaches talk about it all the time, and, and I got to be honest with you, I'm not, a, you know, I don't think anybody that replaces another coach, I don't think like our the former staff at Chatham wanted to lose games. Right. You know, I don't believe that a program <laughs> that's, you know, going, not winning games wants to lose. So in terms of those things, like I think, you know, what, what I try to do is like, you know, we want to try to take, steps and I tell the kids like we want to win every game you know but the first thing we got to do is make it competitive we got to be in every game and we can't give up and I think you know kids that um can you guys hear me just says uh yeah we hear you hello. yep okay okay um I didn't know if it froze um but you know we have kids that I think now are, are really saying like they're competing and they know you know we we were down 
you know, a couple close games and, and they didn't stop playing. And that's what you want to see. Um, and I think, again, it goes back to just developing those younger kids to, to kind of come up in the system. We, we have our youth program running some of our defense and offense. So when they come up, hopefully it's a little bit less of a transition. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you, when you build a program, when you're starting, I, you know, I was fortunate, the guy that I started coaching for down in Allentown, New Jersey, you know, he took the job when he was 26, I was 27 and kind of got thrown to the fire here. And they hadn't had a winning season in I think like 50 something years. And, you know, I saw what he did and, you know, by the end of his, you know, he took a job down in Matawan, but, you know, by the end of his, you know, kind of uh, nine, 10 years there, they won a sectional title. And, you know, he had a state player of the year and this kid, Jordan Winston, and they were doing things, you know, and it just starts from just, you know, going out there, coaching the guys as hard as you can, bringing excitement. And I think, you know, we got a lot of, I think the kids are excited because the coaches are excited and then we're excited. The kids are excited and it just feeds off each other. So, you know, you got to bring that energy as a coach. It doesn't matter um, how you do that. Um, you know, whether you're a yeller or not, I'm kind of more laid back. I have some coaches that yell, but when I, you know, um, I think in terms of five year, I think, you know, I tell the kids all the time, I, I was fortunate to have, you know, I went to Randolph to see a practice when we kind of got out and they were playing Woodbridge and then, I went over to see Coach Gibbs at Ramapo and, um, you know, to, to kind of see what he was doing. And, and he was very grace, you know, gracious to kind of let me watch. And, you know, you see these programs and sometimes you get the misconception that there's D1 athletes all over um, and they got good players, but they're just well coached. So it was one of the things that I put a priority on and why I brought those two guys in to make sure kids are getting coached. Um, and I think if you can bring the bottom level up, it, it helps the program out. So the goal is, you know, we're on year three um, and, and hopefully down the road, you know, we start kind of becoming more consistent on the field and, and putting a product out there that our community can be very excited about. Mm. And I know, I think, doesn't Gino uh, Pescarella run the uh, youth, youth uh, football program down there? He's, I think he's the treasurer. The, the guy that runs it right now is this guy, Henry Ashton, who uh, played at Bucknell actually. So, oh, is that right? Yeah, so okay. he um he, oh you know, oh I'm sorry, he runs the league. Yeah, I think he's involved in the league. That's right, Pascarella. Okay. Yeah. Oh Pascarella, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so so yeah, he the league he's got something to do. I can't remember, but I, the league is very competitive. I mean, I don't know like like I said, I'm trying to figure it out. I know certain programs are doing Pop Warner. Um I just the setup for Chatham works really well. I mean, you know, it's just kind of they play some t competitive teams. I know they play Westfield, there's a Somerville. Um, you know, I don't think there's a couple other, uh, other programs, but it's nice. So yeah. it works for us. That's yeah, it's cool. I mean, it just seems like, uh, you know, that program at Chatham, you know, I, every time I get a sandwich at Pascarella brothers, I talk to Gino and, you know, we talk uh shop and he, they seem to really, really take that youth program serious. And, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it, that seems to really, uh, play well into what you're doing there. No. Yeah. Oh no, it does. I mean, I can't, it's, it's nice to see, you know, at my former high school, like I said, you know, when you go, I would go down with the head coach and we look at the Pop Warner and, you know, sometimes you'd have a mix of kids from different programs because they're trying to get a program out there and be able to compete and be like, oh, is that kid from our town? Is Or no, he's from here. He's from here. You know, I don't have to worry about that. All the kids when I go out are from Chatham. So it's nice to know that like, oh, there's all the kids that I know are coming to our program. Mm. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, Jerry, from just, uh, you know, being a leader of the uh, coaches association and and uh, just being a football guy in the area, you know, what's it like when you have a young guy, you know, like Dan come in with all this energy to one of our, our area's programs? Um, you know, what do you say about that? I think and Dan, you, you got to back me up on this. I think when we do have a new coach come into the area, we reach out to the new coaches in the area and, and about getting involved with the Morris County Football Coaches Association. Do, does every guy do it? No, sometimes it takes a little bit of prompting, but I'll say this about Dan. Dan was there from day one in the meetings and everything. And I'll say this too about Chatham's youth program. You know, every spring we do a coaches clinic and there's been years where we have 12 youth Chatham coaches come to the clinic and all, you know, and that that's starts with whoever the head coach is that's on, uh, you know, at Chatham with the high school. And all. I know Dan will 
we'll keep up with that. And all. But uh, I, I think we've tried to reach out to young coaches to be involved in all. And, you know, what? when I'm talking about myself as a – I became a head coach when I was 26 or 27 years old at Morris Catholic. And the guy I used to ride – to all kinds of meetings with Bill Regan Sr. from uh, Del Barton and all. And I can't tell you as a young coach, you know, you're like a sponge being around Bill Regan Sr. and 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 uh, um, John Tarona and Pete Piccarillo and 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 those guys and and and, uh, and John Bauer certainly at Randolph. They were that's where the tradition of the whole Mars County coaches deal started with those guys and help trying to help young coaches and and help our area be good so it, it, it's important and I, I hope that we've reached out to the young guys in the area and all to get them involved and I, I think we have will nahan's a perfect example of another guy as soon as he took over got involved with us and he's served on committees and everything for us already he's doing mm. a great job Jerry, back yeah, I, gotta, the... I gotta catch up to Will with that there, Jerry. I got a little bit more of a drive right now, so until I get kind of can move up there, I gotta kind of, you know, pick my time. <laughs> well, we'll give you a sleeping bag, and you can sleep in the nights yeah. of Columbus. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if you if you could cross, uh, come over to the dark side and call Taylor Ham. We'll, we'll maybe uh, we'll let a realtor sell you a house. Right. Uh, there you go. I know. I right? I have to start. They won't know what I'm ordering. Yeah, hey, um, Old Town Deli in Booton's been voted the top teller ham, egg, and cheese sandwich in the whole state of New Jersey. So make sure you take a look at the sign on the way by when you come to meet. Yeah, us. well, the one time in there we went to, sh I went to Sharky's with a couple of coaches. That was great. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, so and, and uh, you know, back in the day, uh, Coach Gallagher, were, were all those guys Bauer and um, the Sharon, all those guys you mentioned, Piccarolo. Was there association like it is now? Was it the same thing? Oh, yeah. It was like um, in those days, it was mandatory that if you were coaching in Morris County, you went to the meetings. We met, met on, at the Millbrook Firehouse on Route 10 at Randolph. You pass it when you're going to Randolph High School. And all. I know where it is. And John yeah. Bauer was in charge of that. And all. I this I'll give you a funny story. We were wing T team and John Bauer, you know, was wing T. And during a meeting, um, we met in Madison for this meeting. I said, coach, could you spend some time with me talking about the, the wing back counter that you run? And John said, yeah, I'll talk with you about it and all, but we're not going to do it here. If you want to, I forget what the name of the diner is in Madison. Well, it was like five o'clock in the morning and we were sitting there talking about the wing back counter play and all uh, is that right i found the notebook uh about a year ago i found a little orange and white notebook with all the notes notes from john bauer 1976 uh, blah 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 and all, so. no kidding yeah wow that's just fascinating <laughs> yes uh, yeah. i mean what was that guy doing something different than other coaches were doing jerry um you know, what was that guy? Uh, why was he so special and so successful? Well, first things first, if John coached every aspect of football in Randolph from the midget program on up, John had a handle on the depth chart. If you were a right guard in the first grade in Randolph, you were the right guard at Randolph High School when you were a senior in high school and all. I think he started every day at like one o'clock or so with the different aspects of who he was coaching in the program and everything else. And John just had a tremendous handle on it. He was a great social guy in terms of, uh, um, you know, the way he could communicate with his athletes and his coaches and everything and tremendous that way. John or, or Bill Regan Sr. was when you talk about mentors, he was a mentor for young coaches on how to do things. Um, uh, I don't know what year it was. It's got to be 78, 79, 80. We got permission from the state to open the high school season in New Jersey. With the, the first date you could play was Friday night. Um, 
Del Barton and Morris Catholic, we played each other on the Thursday before that. And it was Bill and I riding to a meeting. He said, hey, why don't we see if the state will allow us to do this? And neither one of us had lights. We rented Randolph High School, which you had to go through John Bauer to get that. And we had a packed house. I have a beautiful photo somewhere coming out under the goalpost in a night game at Randolph High School and all on that. And it was a great game. We won on a field goal in like the last minute of the game and, and, and all that. Uh, but uh, that's part of the, that, that's the history lesson for today, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, Dan, when you came up to, you know, when you were kind of growing up, did you know about, I mean, you know, it's funny. Randolph is like this flagship program in New Jersey with the miracle Montclair game and, and uh, you know, the John Bauer lore and that big streak and all that kind of stuff. Dan, did you know, when you kind of moved into that, in this area, did you know about that being from Mercer County? Um, I did not until I actually was, I can't remember where, when I, I, it was the year I got the job on NewJersey.com. They posted a story about the Randolph state championship, right? Yep. The game they played. And Montclair. I was reading, I was like, wow, I never knew this. And, um, you know, just something where, when you grow up in a certain area, you kind of, you know, you don't realize certain things that influence football across the state and, you know, in different areas. And, and I gotta be honest, it's nice to kind of, you know, being from another area, seeing some of the things that happened here, but also coming up there and, and kind of knowing the history a little bit more and, 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 and hearing about those guys, um, you know, it's pretty cool. So um, I knew a little bit about Randolph coming up there because I know, um, you know, I was up to the, I remember we had the scouted team that was playing uh, Randolph and I went to one of the games one time and I was like, wow, this is the, you know, I'm getting dizzy driving on these roads here because it's all over the mountains and everything. And, uh, you know, where is this school at? But, you know, um, that was when Tarig was there, I think, before Will, when Will was the D.C. So, um, no, it's, it's, it's great hearing stories like that because you don't realize the influence in the area and stuff like that. So it's awesome. Mm, yeah, it's George, really cool. the, the day of the miracle at Montclair game, I'm the head football coach at William Patterson College then. So okay. I wasn't at the miracle – at Montclair, I was at your game with Hanover Park playing oh, Roselle, and uh, and then of course you heard about it and all that. After what, that, what were you doing at that game, Jerry? I mean, the, we, we the were Montclair scouting. Game. That's I was at that game because I was scouting the Hanover guys, and then one of my other coaches was you know doing Montclair and Randolph, and all. We, I had uh, uh, coaches at every one of the the games that we could get to, you know. Uh, well, if you're the head coach there, you lost that bet, man. I mean, didn't you want to be at that uh, Montclair? Even we were like, oh, that's the game of uh, – <laughs> the, There's that a one? story I can't tell you online that I'll tell you sometime <laughs> about that and all. It, it's, it's an – because um, the first appointment I had on Monday morning after that game was at um, – no, it was at Bloomfield High School. And so Chet Parlovecchio – was at that game or said he was at that game and we talked about it and all so okay yeah yeah so i that was 1990 so you're right i was a player dan on uh hanover park and we won our state championship that day not that i did anything you know i i led the team in uh bringing the water back and forth from the huddle to the sideline although i did have a helmet on i was on the team but um that's not good but it was funny. We came off that field and I remember some reporter was like, we were kind of like, what happened at Montclair? You know, what happened with uh, Randolph? And they were like, oh, it was this unbelievable thing. Last ticket, you know, all the fans ran on the field. They had to kick them off. And, and uh, it was just one of those. Uh, hey, George, you're a state champ all the way. Yeah, I yeah. don't ask how much water you brought or how many touchdowns you scored. You're a freaking state champ. That's uh, all that counts, man. You know, it's funny. I have, I'm one of four boys, five boys and, um, three of one of them played division one football uh division uh one baseball one played division two baseball uh i mean football one tried out for some nfl teams i was the least athletic but i'm the only one with a ring so uh they they always i used to not i used to kind of keep my high my cut my football you know i don't have many accolades but i used to keep that under the wraps but they always give me crap so uh i feel like whenever they're uh, they're always listening so i always gotta you know what, George, though, it, it's it's one of the great things about football. You know, everybody has a role on that team and everybody helped, 
you guys win a state championship and all. And I tell you, to, uh, said it to guys all the time. When you win state championship, they don't say, hey, you won a state championship, but you didn't play. They say, you know, and, and they say yeah, you were part of a state championship team. And that's what it comes down to in, in the long run. Everybody did their job, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll take that, Jerry. I'll, I'll accept that. And those guys, those, those leaders on that team, they, they always say the same thing. So I'll hang my hat on that stuff. <laughs> it's part of the game. It's part of being a team. You know, it's, I'll get off my soapbox now, but <laughs> no, I do. You know what, Dan, I say this, and you know, I, we, we cover high school sports and, you know, I've, I've learned through the years that there are kids who spend four years on a varsity team and never step on the varsity field, but they're part of the team and they're showing up and they're running sprints and putting the unit, you know, and I always right. say like that kid is just as much of a gladiator as the star and you, you're right, Jerry. Usually the stars say the same thing. They're like, hey, that kid may not be playing because maybe he's too small or whatever. Or just not athletic enough. Or, you know, maybe the coach thinks it's a you know safety hazard for the kid. But, um, you know, I, I, I love those kids because it's hard to stick. It's hard to stick it out on a football team, even if Absolutely. it's harder if you're not playing. Right. <laughs> you know, I used to make the guys fill out a questionnaire every year. And the one kid i'll never forget it i know the kid i can see his face his name i said why do you play football at morris catholic and the kid's answer was because i like the t-shirts and shorts you give out you know <laughs> guys play for different reasons but they all got to run the same sprints they all got to be in the same scrimmages tackle block do all the same stuff you know so uh, you do what you're supposed to do well, i'll give you a pair of shorts and a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> that's great um well hey uh listen dan i appreciate you uh coming on sharing a little bit about uh what you got cooking over there we're excited can't wait to see out there we're going to be broadcasting a couple of your games just so yeah. you know as you know um so hey we, we uh we wish you the best of luck and your team and hopefully uh we can get through this next couple of weeks without any kind of covid spikes and no one panicking and we can actually have a season yeah yeah no I'm, I'm i appreciate you having me on i love what you guys do um it's always great and the parents always speak highly about the broadcast so you know george i will say you know coming from another area you don't see it you know that uh you know i don't have that's not in mercer county what you're doing so you know it is appreciative and and it's a way to get the high school kind of sports out there and i know a lot of parents in our community can appreciate it Jerry, as always, thanks for talking. I always enjoy listening to you and, and um, you know, looking forward to having, you know, I don't know what the meetings are going to look like, kind of, you know, hopefully we could get back to some normalcy uh, when the meetings start up, you know, because I, I enjoy those. And, uh, you know, I just appreciate you guys having me on here. Absolutely. Let's hope they're not Zoom. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so, Dan, great to see you. Jerry, if you don't mind staying for a minute or two. and uh, we'll, Yeah, I'd love we'll, to. We'll, We'll let Dan go, and uh, best of luck, Dan. We'll be talking. Good All luck, right, Dan. Yeah. Thanks. Have a good weekend. Yeah, Take care. Too. Bye. Go get him. Yeah, so we'll let uh, Dan go. And, uh, you know, Coach, you know, it seems like there's like this this posse of young coaches that are in the area. You know, you got like Dan Japaja and uh, uh, Will Nahan and, you know, guys like uh, uh, Jerry Venturino. Uh, you know, and it seems like a kind of a different breed of coach. You know what I mean? Like uh, – uh, they, they seem to have adapted and they're doing a lot of uh, the basics, but they're bringing this kind of young, youthful kind of mindset. What do, what do you say about that? It's great for the game. You know, that's the thing. Like I love doing this and I love talking about coaching and doing clinics and everything, but the future of the game is the Brian Gallagher's and the Jerry Venturino's and the Dan Zepica's and, and all the young guys that are coming and all, you know, the, the enthusiasm that they bring. And let's face it, in 2020, the challenges of a football coach are a lot different, if nothing else, from an administrative point of view. Mm. with the different forms and now you got to take temperatures and social distancing and all the other things that go on in the modern world we live on and live in you know it's it's a different deal and the game's in good shape because of people you know like the guys we talked with today and what they're doing and, and how they're doing it and the one thing that is consistent and, and i think especially in our area is the football is great, 
but what all these guys try to do character wise with their kids is just it's it's tremendous you know so we, we're really, the game is in good shape yeah i think so too and and uh you know it's funny like we talk about uh the different programs like the randolphs and the roxburys and the west morrises uh, but the, it looks it, it's there's just uh the smaller schools jerry are just as exciting you know the group one the group twos i mean they are battling it out the mountain lakes and booton yeah. and the what, what par high has been doing and um, you know, it's not just these big, you know, bruising football programs that have been around for years, these young, these smaller schools, there's just not a bad game around, you know, every week you're like, I want to see that game. I want to see Booten against uh, par high. Yeah. You know, yeah. what do you say about that? I think it's competition, you know, you, you can't always judge teams by what their final one loss record is. You look at the scores of the games that they were in. How hard did those kids compete? You know, I think in our area alone, there aren't many games that are gimmies. You got to earn your victories in Morris and Sussex County. You know, you better be ready to go or you're going to get upset. You're going to get knocked off that week and all. And it's a credit to the coaches and the job they do with their kids. Yeah. What, what's going on over there at uh, Delby, uh, Jerry? Um, the one thing I'm so excited about is I think this is a could be a really great year for Del Barton. And uh, I love the quarterback, man, uh, Cole Freeman. He just reminds me of uh, Brett Favre, you know, with that just has an edge. Uh, seems to be that kind of kid who's having fun when he's playing, that kind of thing. Cole is one of our leaders. He's a very competitive very competitive kid. I, I love being around him because of the way that he likes to compete and all. There's a toughness about him, but we have a great, we have a great senior class this year. It's, yes. it's a big senior class and all, you know, there's just um, so many good ones in there. We have five, we, we named five captains the other day. How often can you do that? And that's a credit to the leadership skills of the guys, you know, Jake Jarmolowicz is, is, should be one of the, the uh, top defenders in the state and all this year, Dylan Nicholas is one of our linebackers. He's, he's a captain for us. Gary Lewis does a great job, uh, you know, um, with the ball in his hands and, yep. and, uh, and leading and all. And we have a real good defensive lineman who's a captain too in Elijah Hills. Oh, that kid Hills. is, that kid's poised to have a great year, no? Yeah, and we have a bunch of them. Again, I don't want to leave any of them out. There's like 25, <laughs> 26 of them and all, but they're all good kids, so. Seniors? Uh, you got 26 seniors, Jerry? Yeah, I think it's 25 or 26. I think it's 25. Is that right? Yeah. How many kids in the program total, do you know? Um, Right now on the varsity, our numbers are, you know, Dan talking about numbers before. This is one thing I think that you're seeing. We had the scare when that whole concussion issue first came out. But I think coaches have done a great job with the concussion protocol, with the, uh, you know, managing our contact issues and all to where parents are comfortable with their kids playing football in, in many, many spots for us right now. So I think you'll see a lot of schools are saying that their numbers are up from where they've been. We have a 71 on the varsity, but we also have 49 freshmen, which what? is phenomenal, phenomenal. 49 we haven't had freshmen? anywhere near those numbers in the past few years. We had 54 varsity players a year ago. So, oh my God. Yeah. 49 freshmen? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. It's a good group. <laughs> and Jerry, do you get that sense that that, you know, that that was kind of a I don't want to call it a fad because it's not the right word. But, you know, that whole s hysteria around. Yes, um, that, the that's probably a good word for it. No. Do you think it kind of, uh, fade, you know, it was kind of peaked and it's kind of going the other way now? I, th I think it's going the other way, because when you talk with youth coaches, I think what most youth coaches are saying now is that their second, third, fourth grade numbers are all up. So, Oh, really? You know, yeah. So the numbers are coming back now. And all. Is it that maybe we're playing flag football at the younger ages and all? I don't know. 
but uh, I, I think uh, I think there's been enough research and enough uh, um, trying to do things the right way, um, type deals to try and minimize injuries and all that uh, that it's making a good comeback. You know, Jerry, I've seen the, the Morris County Coach Association talk about injuries and the way you guys are practicing and not hitting and not putting pads on. I've talked to Smolin, you know, just about, yeah. you know, he's not, you know, they're not hitting until game day, you know, whatever. Um, is that, do you, is that the, what you think is going on across the country or is that just what you, you guys are doing here in the. No, Morris I think Center? it pretty much is across the country and all I know, you, you know, Northern northern part of the country i know that it is and all because we all respect and love the game too much to where again where i said before it's a game of adjustments we've had to adjust to that you know when you you look at that picture from 1968 we scrimmaged every day you know yeah (laughs) your skill drill was bull in the ring you know you don't see that anymore and all those very little we're We've done tackling circuits already. You know, we've done tackling circuits without actually tackling anybody at all. So, Is that right? How do you do that? How do you do that? Well, you're doing your skills and you just either tag off or get close enough to the person where I come to balance and we don't make contact on it and all. I think mm. that's going to be one of the big things coming back. Uh, you know, in terms of evaluating your players, your scrimmages are limited this year. You can only have one scrimmage against another team. So um, I think you know how it works. There are guys that look great in all the non-contact drills that we do now, but are they going to blink or shut their eyes when it comes time to, to the, the, the tackling drills that we can actually do and all? So it's going to be a heavy evaluation period for those couple of weeks before the first game. Is that a thing that happens, Jerry? Like you have a kid that, you know, may look just great athletic wise, but just isn't a great tackler and doesn't yeah. like to hit. I mean, it, it's rare, but yes, it, it okay. does happen. You, you know, so. Mm. And, and, and Jerry, what about, you know, one of the things they talk about is like this uh, being, um, you know, physically fit, but then it, you talk about being kind of football ready. Uh, is that is that a real thing? Um, it's it's ready from the banging around, in my opinion, from the banging around that you actually do once we put the pads on and everything. You know, George, that's another thing. Now there are a lot of teams that don't very rarely wear full pads in practice anymore. You know, mm. so um, yeah. And, and I think that could be the difference this year in terms of only having one scrimmage where before you had a better chance to evaluate kids when you had three scrimmages and all, but as coaches, we'll, we're all in the same boat. So it's going to be who makes the most, uh, the best use of their time and all in terms of evaluating and, and preparing yourself for the first game. Hmm. Now, who do you, you, you know, we, we look at like an October 2nd start, but it's still really about a three week start that you have before your first game, which was similar to what we had before. It's just a later start. And also, I, I think we can be OK. Yeah. I mean, is, is a, a six game schedule? Uh, I mean, everybody want, will, will take that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. If we, if we can play six games. I think most coaches will be happy right now because of the fears that you have with the COVID. Are, you know, are you, are you going to get a play a game and then have to take a two week break? You know, because teams are quarantined and that. So yeah, do we know what the story is with the postseason or no? I was going to ask you if you were. <laughs> you know. I know, no. like it's they have a seating committee which I don't know. I wish I had more information right now. I don't know how that's going to work exactly. And then we're divided into what six geographic areas and our geographic area is Morris, Sussex, and Passaic counties. Hmm, so you're going to have, they're calling them 14, what, area tournaments? Well, what does Del Barton do? I was going to say, what would they do? Because you have Seton Hall Preps in Essex County, DePaul's in... Yeah, uh, and we're going to play some of those teams during the season too, you know. Yeah, so, like, I, gonna... I wanted it was one of the things that I didn't get a chance to ask John what he thought about it and all because they're in somewhat 
the same boat. But are we going to only play teams from Morris, Sussex, and Passaic? We play, we play Pope John during the regular season, you know? So I don't yeah. know. Will it be a deal where Del Barton and Pope John are playing other public schools from our area in that tournament? So that, that remains to be seen what will, what will happen with that. Yeah. That, that, that would be interesting if that would be the case. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and you guys open up a seat in all prep, I think, right? Yeah. We open with Seton Hall. Then we have Pope John, St. Peter's prep, um, DePaul, and then Hudson Catholic and Morristown. Okay. I like that schedule. I like you guys playing those. Um, it's a good those, schedule. Yeah. I yeah. like those parochials that you're playing. That seems to be in, you know. Oh, good... yeah. That's a dog fight. The first four, four weeks is a dog fight. And then we get Hudson, who definitely has athletes. And then Morristown, you know, that's the, the, the backyard rivalry there and all. That's for bragging rights. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, well, hey Jerry, I appreciate you coming, man. I, I love I love when you start going into those old stories. I could honestly I could listen to those all day, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know what's tremendous right now that I have a ball with the that Morris um, alumni deal that I, you know, I think you kind of started it on Facebook and everything. Yeah, like John Chirona, what he's been putting up with the old Morristown Roxbury pictures and all, and then it was was it Rich Spitzer right before that had all the old Roxbury pictures on there and all. Yep. I love that stuff. You know, I, it, it brings a sense of history to, to, <laughs> to people and all too, you know? Yeah. It's, I love that. I actually created one for Morris. It's the Morris County uh, sports alumni, high school yeah. sports. I created yeah. one for, um, for Essex, uh, Essex and Sussex as well. They're kind of separate cool. and uh, you know, they're, it's really cool. The Essex, my father played for Irvington, and he graduated, I think, at 50. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I, and those, uh, you know, I'm on the board of the National Football Foundation. All those guys are all old orange guys. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot, that's very active. And the Sussex County one, they're, they're so passionate about their sports up there. So it's so fun listening to all those old stories. And, you know, it's fun looking at, the, I love the guys that are posting the all area teams from those years and all. Yeah, I, I, those are great. You look back and you see some of the names that are on there. It's just tremendous. <laughs> you know, it's funny, Jerry, you look at those names and then you're like, damn, that 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 kid played, you know, that guy's son from 60, yes. you know, 65. I remember him in the 80s. And now, you know, then now his son's playing up in, uh, you know, Roxbury now, you know, <laughs> we talked about Paul Onorati before. Yes. If you go back to, oh, I, I, I don't know the exact year, but Paul was an all-state nose guard for us. He played in the, uh, the it might have been, it, I guess it was the North-South game then. There was a North-South and there was an East-West when it first started, but he played in that. And then you go back. I love it because then I was coaching at Booton when Paul Jr. was playing, I'd go scout and then Paul would be on the hill standing next to me while we were scouting and all. But it, it's right? really neat when you've been around for a while to see the, the sons of the great players that are, are now, you know, doing a great job. Well, you mentioned Spitzer. So Spitzer, one of the Spitzer's kids uh, is that he's, uh, I think, a senior at uh, Lucas Spitzer is a senior at um, Roxbury okay. right now. Um you know, there was one that went to the Rutgers and it's his son. Yeah. A big six, four kid. He's those Spitzers were always big linemen. This kid's yes. a skill. Yes. This kid's a skill guy. I think he's got some yeah. speed to him, which yeah. I, the parents are probably, the dads are probably like, Hey, you know, try to get your hand on the ball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. I, I love looking at those, those all-stars and then seeing the names that are of the kids that are either playing now or that have played, you know, the, the legacy that just, uh, Keeps I remember through. being at some of those games, you know, so it's, it's really cool. It's really <laughs> great. Yeah. That's cool. I love that stuff too. But, uh, Hey Jerry, man, I love having you on. I, I appreciate you coming. I know you're a busy guy, but I, I always, uh, just love having you on. <laughs> great. Anytime, you know, that I have such a good, just being with, you know, John and Dan and now all the coaches that we get to be on with them all just, it, it makes my day. So I love it. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right, Jerry. Hey, listen, I'll let you go. You know, best. I'm sure we'll be talking before the football season starts, but uh, you know, best of luck this next couple of weeks while you're 
kind of uh you know not in touch with the the, the, the athletes and all that keep uh, hey keep up the good work we need you you know really helping us uh get the word out on what everybody's doing and all okay thanks george thanks. you and I karen do a great job I appreciate that. Thanks so much, Jerry. All, All right. right we'll... See you later. Bye yep. Bye. You too. All right. We'll let Jerry go. And I uh, can't thank him enough for coming on and always being a, a, a great guest for our program. And I want to thank you for watching and tuning in. And I want to thank the Ivy rehab and Eric Armstrong. He was going to come out. Jerry had a great question about the Yankees and the players and how do we keep these guys from uh, falling apart when they run up to the, the first baseline. So, uh, but Eric's busy. He's running stuff. He's running this operation. If you are injured, if you have a surgery, anything like that, whether you're uh, a former athlete or if you're a current athlete, you got to come to one place. And that's uh, Ivy Rehab here up in Newton. They're in Denville, Chester, uh, Florham Park. Um, they're just about everywhere, you know, within a 10 minute drive of anywhere you live in Morris, Sussex. Uh, big shout out to uh, to the town of Newton. Um, I also have, before this, I went to uh, Newton Nutrition. I got myself uh, a, a wrap, which I'll eat after this. And uh, I'm already going to tell you it's going to get a high rating because they just uh, do a phenomenal job. If you're hungry, you don't want to eat fast food, go to Newton Nutrition right up in Newton. And uh, they'll take care of you. So everybody, hey, thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll see everybody on the flip side. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Whether you are a trucker or a landscaper, accountant or carpenter, needing workers' compensation, general liability, or commercial auto insurance, Gladstone Coverage Group has you covered. Gladstone Coverage Group is a one-stop agency specializing in many types of insurance, including life, personal, business, and Medicare supplement insurance, as well as employee benefits, serving many communities throughout New Jersey. As an insurance partner protecting you and future generations, contact Tyler Brinson at 908-698-0477 or by email at tylerb at gladstonecoverage.com and tell him Morris Sussex Sports sent you. Samino and Philippone is a New Jersey-based law firm with offices in Morristown and Hazlitt, devoted to providing quality legal representation and personal attention in the areas of residential and commercial real estate, estate planning, and personal injury. Contact Joe Philippone at 732-203-0060 or by email at jphilippone at cf-lawfirm.com. Are you getting ready to buy a new grill? Before you do, call JC Grill Cleaning in Morristown, New Jersey. They are a mobile grill cleaning company that comes right to your home and will restore your grill to a better condition than the day you bought it. No matter how extensive the cleanup, JC will replace and repair the burners, get your starter working again, remove carcinogens, and make sure the grill is operating safely. So all you have to worry about is turning it on and cooking your favorite sausages, steaks, pork, or whatever you like to throw on the barbecue. This is also a great gift idea for dad. Call or text JC Grill Cleaning today at 347-720-9386. Or message them on Instagram at JC Grill Cleaning to make your grill better than ever at a fraction of the cost of buying a new one. And don't forget to tell them more Sussex Sports sent you.